welcome everyone to Keeping Candles Mysterious. We are Lawful Stupid RPG and we're thrilled to have you join us while we play some of the Candlekeep Mysteries module with a few additions sprinkled in here and there. My name is Buddy and I'll be helming this adventure while our normal Saturday night game Cold Hard Witch is on hiatus. If you've joined us for our other ventures into Candlekeep, you might notice some new and some old faces. Let's see who we have here tonight, shall we? Tonight we have Lee playing Carolus, the Yuan T pureblood warlock of the genie. We have Rodney playing Cesar, the human Tempest cleric. Uh, Pike is playing Bertram, the half orc paladin monk. He is uh, delayed, but will be joining us here, uh, hopefully in about fifty minutes, uh, and we'll we'll work him right into the story. Uh, joining our group, we have Mama Distracted, who is playing Keed Eridni, the centaur star druid. And next week, we will have yet another new player joining us. Mmm, a mystery. Mm. How is everyone tonight? <clears throat> I, again, dreading this accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad I don't I, have an accent for this one. That's fine. Made, this, made character choices, and now I got to live with them. <laughs> this is absolutely true. It reminds me of uh, when, in, uh, I don't know if you ever watched Friends, but when Ross decided to teach with the British accent and yes. then was trying to phase it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Candlekeep. Candlekeep is the largest repository of lore and writings in all the realms. Its vaults, it is said, contain hidden knowledge enough to make any person with the ability to discover and absorb it all powerful beyond compare. The problem with doing that, of course, is the same with secrets in any, in any location. One must know that a secret exists before its details can be sussed out. Many of the assets at Candlekeep remain enigmas for years. Sometimes things are discovered to be dangerous or to contain instructions to elicit or hidden treasures or simply to need verification. Candlekeep does not officially employ staff to deal with these situations, but they do keep a few groups of adventurers on retainers so they can call upon them for these extracurricular activities. We normally begin in our private tavern room with our adventurers relaxing and waiting for a new assignment but not today. Recently, Candlekeep was attacked by some outside forces. Our heroes are walking the city and looking at some of the damage. There's still damaged structures, still blood marks on some walls and streets, and even the occasional body who hasn't been taken away. I uh, would like for the, the three of you that are here to describe your characters in turn. Uh, let's start with Carolus. Uh, Carolus claims to be half genie. Um, he looks a very elven. Um, he has a fantastic flowing blue cloak, blonde hair, um, very handsome, loves coloring books. Um, yeah, he's actually a Yuan T, but he claims he thinks he's half genie and will stick by his guns for that. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Cesar, how about you? Uh, Cesar is human. Um, sailor aesthetic with like adamantine armor on. Um, he's got his hair up in a uh, in a bandana. Um, like like medium buildish stature. Um, with the swagger of like he was a pirate and gave that life up because of reasons. Um, and now wanders around. Uh, candle keep fooling wizards. <laughs> More importantly, what's his accent like? Uh, yeah, what's, what's, he, what's he sound like, Cesar? He's some crow. He's... Um, we'll find out in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Cesar is still remembering himself because it's been it's been a little while since uh, he figure out those he mouth used that one. <laughs> uh, and uh, also we have Keed. Will you please describe yourself for us, Keed? Uh, yes, Keed is a centaur. Uh, her horse half of her body is um, a red roan color with a auburn tail. Her human half of her body is um, a, a tanned color with also um, auburn hair. She's wearing leather armor and uh, yeah, she's looking around. And no strange accent, like Cesar might have. 
No, no strange accent, because I am not very good at doing them. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. Uh, all right, as you as you take in the scene around you, uh, which which is is quite somber. Um, Candle Keep is normally, you know, kind of reserved and 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 businesslike and and higher learning, but but now it, it's it's somber. People people are having a hard time believing that there was an attack on on the keep um, and that it, it got so far so far in. So you're, you're taking all this in, and uh, suddenly around the corner, a decrepit, gray bearded dwarf comes around in, in a half run toward you. Uh, he is wheezing heavily. He's dressed in a, a custodial uniform, a, a custodian of Candlekeep uniform. And he carries a heavy square tome bound in black leather under his arm. The weight of the book seems to kind of throw him off in his half run as he continues to wheeze and, and squint and clench his teeth. Just as he reaches you, he barely manages to eke out the the the, the, the livestock are taking the barn and then he cries out he gives one last deep wheeze and his knees buckle and he collapses in front of you with the book pressed beneath him uh the, what the livestock or what Taking the barn. Uh, can I do spare the dying on him, or is he like, is he like, is he dying dead, or is he just like passing out? Uh, he seems to be to be pretty pretty bad off. Um, you could attempt spare the dying for sure. <clears throat> All right, little one, hold on there. You ain't gonna pass out on me now. Are you happy now, everyone? Yeah, I love it <laughs> so much. <laughs> Uh, at least uh, makes him stable is uh, I think it's all I'm just trying to do. Okay. Yeah. His, um, his breath is still very labored and ragged. Um, the, there, there must be some sort of something wrong with him. Uh, but, but you have for the moment stopped him from, from expiring. Um, as you, as you reach down and, and touch him to, to, to cast that cantrip, um, a, a large group of what you all know as uh, know of as candlekeep monks appear and they begin yelling at you to stop and to put your hands up and i mean they come in just ready 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 to fight uh they have their their spears pointed at you they they are in in position ready to fight you and um and they're yelling at you to to back away from him and to put your hands up all right, we're back, back to you. See, Mahan, now you, I got the tattoo on it, everything. You see, we work here. Uh, he sees the, the tattoo on your hand, and a couple of them have a, a very quiet conversation. Hmm. We're. Right. You work here? What, 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 what has happened to this man? What's happened? He, he had run up and said, uh, the, the, the animals are taking over the barns, or the livestock taking over the barns. So we got to get to the barn or whatever over there. I'm so confused of why the livestock are taking over the barn. Right, you think they live there already? Why would they take over? Sometimes so one thinking. one might want to be in charge of where they live. Um, <laughs> the two the two monks who seem to be in charge look at each other in a very quizzical way. Uh, I think, I think perhaps you, uh, you'd better come with us to see the first reader and, and get this sorted out. Um, we, uh, we, we would request that you come with us to, uh, to, to Bookworm's office. And so they, they back, they back down from their, their aggressive stance, but they still, they still are ready, but they're not, they're no longer pointing their weapons at you. I pick up the big book. Put the, hmm. put the dwarf up here. <laughs> and uh, with us. Okay, uh, so two of them uh, pick the dwarf up and and saddle him across you. Uh, and the the one the one monk who has been speaking 
uh, Carolus does at least attempt to take the book back from you. Uh, Candle Keep property. Thank you very much. Just wanted to see if it had any pictures. Uh, and he will he will very very tightly hold that. Uh, if you would like to roll a perception check, Let's we'll see to... how much of the title that you can see. Oh, okay, perception. Can I actually roll crack and dice? You absolutely may. Uh, it. I, I would love for everyone to do initiative in roll 20 just so it keeps yeah. in the tracker but for everything else feel free to use roll 20 or crack and dice or if you must use something that's not crack and dice you may use something I else. rolled a 12 for an 18 Ooh, okay for an 18 I am going to uh, message you I rolled crack and dice in ages <clears throat> I'm looking at the, uh, the twilight sets on the site now I need to get some more. Oh, I might buy uh, some tonight. Right. So I just sent you a message in in uh, in chat to, to, of what the title, what it seems like the title of the book is. That's what seems it. In other words, you just spelt it wrong. Or... That's what it seems. That's what it looks like when oh. you when you look at it. Um, I am going uh, to cast cure wounds on the dwarf that has been placed on my back. Okay, uh, I love it. Let's uh, let's do it. I say, are you sure this is your property? I want to do Seven. an insight check. Uh, he maybe seems a little, a little better, but it's still he's he's still very labored. He has not come back to consciousness, and it, it he's very labored in in the chest. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Carolus. What are you? Who are you asking or inciting I'm what to? You? To the monks. Are you sure this is your property or Candlekeep's property? It could be mine, you know. In fact, it may yeah, may well be mine. If it's so, got pictures in, it might be mine. We were we were chasing him who had your book for the last three or four blocks. Could be. Hmm. Let's see what Bookworm has to say. Okay, and they I'll, will. I'll give it to them myself. I hope they, they. Well, they will not let the book go f go from. So you two can both kind of co-carry it if you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's uh he's not happy about that, but as they've been sitting there sizing you all up, they they don't think that they have met their match, but they definitely know that uh, that that you guys are not necessarily to be trifled with so, do you not know who i am uh no and then he will he will holding the book kind of lead off and drag you along behind um Half so genie. You, i could do you, <laughs> another leg <laughs> well that would just be one more to kick your ass with um is oh. uh is everyone going to uh going to follow them yes to the library yep. yeah we know. I'm sorry, I, might, the first... I might outpace them a little. <laughs> if you, if you, if you do that, he, the one that's dragging Carolus along will try to like speed up a little, <laughs> and we'll have to see if Carolus will speed up or if Carolus. I get a bit annoyed that. by being dragged along, so half my body, my bottom half, just turns into a genie, and I just let him drag me along. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you definitely hear some some oh kind of impressed tones behind you. Um, I don't know what just happened on the Zoom there. Night keeps struck. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, you hear some impressed s sounds behind you of some of the monks that are like yeah I learned how to do that oh that's pretty handy. Um, all right, so you are all taken to a magnificent library and you were asked to wait there in in kind of this this large common area there are um there are guards around but they are not on top of you um the the one monk has requested the book from you Carolus, to take it to the first reader okay uh, and so for the moment, uh, you are, 
you're not alone because the the room is guarded, but you there's no one no one quite near you. And the three of you have a moment to discuss if you would like. I open the book, like I open. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. The oh. the he is asked if may I take this to the first reader. May I give this to Bookworm? He's asked you for rather than trying to just take it from you. He's asked you for possession of it. Yes, but I want it back. It's one of my favorites. Very good. Uh, and they will disappear into an office that's kind of at the far end of the of this of this area. Hmm. Candle keep deconstruction. It said in the book. Deconstru- like like breaking the the thing down or like a yeah. Or- I don't, I don't like that. We need another camera in here. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Nate's going to turn back up. I'm looking for a chair because I don't want the dwarf on me any longer. Uh, oh, okay. they, they have, they have, they have taken the. Oh, the, good. I'm sorry. I, I forgot that he was writing upon you. I, I don't <laughs> normally think of centaurs as beings to be ridden. Uh, they can and- be though. <laughs> They can. I just. I feel like it's very disrespectful. But you. You. The did guy was unconscious, that. and he needed to be carried to some place. Abs- absolutely. I. Uh, I. I'm just trying to not disrespect your species. Uh, yes. They. They will have taken him from you, uh, to some sort of infirmary. Um, to to see if they can, they can revive him. I don't know if I trust these monks. Have we, they, have they have they been here? Have the monks been here? Because I don't. We've been punching people. Week in and week out, and I never see no monks come in to try and stop us. Uh, the the monks absolutely are the the protectors of Candlekeep. You you recognize them immediately. They just have never really had any kind of confrontation with you. Is that put us ah, back? Mm-hmm. So they're smart. Uh, you were here for just a couple of minutes, um, and through a, a further door. You see your your handler, uh, Master Sage Tomris, ah! <laughs> quickly quickly ushered into the inner office where the monk took that book. She uh, she she looks over and sees all of you, and she she gives you the the pump the brakes, stay calm sign. And then she goes into the door, and then the yelling begins. I immediately put my ear up on the door. <laughs> mm-hmm. no, definitely walk closer so I can try to hear what they're saying. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can certainly get closer. Uh, there, there are guards outside the door who won't let you put your face on the door, but it it definitely sounds like a a, a very muffled male voice, just a, a tirade of yelling, 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 and then it, it'll it'll kind of stop on going up like a question. Like, <laughs> And then in a very composed way, you hear uh, Tomris say, well, as I have explained already, and then the yelling will begin again. Uh, it's it's very like 1980s buddy cop movie. That's the first place where, my mind went. <laughs> where the captain is just dressing down the uh, the, the heroes. Um, and, and this seems to continue for minutes. I don't like it. I'm bored. I get out my big book of <laughs> big, big book of pictures. Well, I, I mean, I will tell you that you're in a magnificent library. There may be more books that uh, have pictures in that you can look at, but you'd have to kind of cull through the shelves for that. I, go, uh, I, go I to... will just start walking the aisles, see if anything catches my eye. Then I guess I go to the place in the library where the letter P starts. <laughs> okay, the letter P in what language? Oh God! <laughs> we'll say we'll say you both pull pull a couple of books off, and um, a, a key to certainly you you find some a couple of interesting books. Nothing that you're it's like, oh, huh, who knew? And you know, thirteen twenty that happened. Uh, nothing that's kind of life altering. Um, uh, Careless, you actually find some. Uh, so, some books. Uh, give me, roll me, a, roll me one d ten. One d ten, you say. Where's my d ten? 
Here's my D2. Six. At six. You find a book that seems to be some sort of uh, anatomical drawing book of orcs. Um, it's, you know, just different, kind of like the Da Vinci, da Vinci uh, you know, the Vitruvian man kind of sketches and it's, you know, their musculature and their, their skeletal system and circulatory, it's probably some sort of medical tome uh, for its time, but uh, definitely lots of pictures in it. Oh, I'll start looking at that then. All right. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we may have to increase your orc knowledge here. <laughs> um, so the, the Cesar, anything for you? Or are you just kind of pacing back and forth saying, no, I don't um... like it. I'm basically back and forth. I like to like, do y'all hear anything? Can you understand him? What, what, what you hear? What you say? Come on, dude, tell me something. You you can hear, hear buddy. But you sat here all day, listen to this man. Yeah, you can't hear what he say through the door. You tell me. Just come on, give, give me something. Okay. Dude, he does this all the time. It's it, it's. Uh, I just don't even hear it anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, you just drown it out. Uh so this goes on for about fifteen, maybe twenty <laughs> minutes, and then the yelling finally stops. The door opens. Master Sage Thomas walks out, and the door slams behind her. And she says, Whew. Well, I guess we can all go to my office now. I need my book. Uh, uh yeah. Uh, yeah, go, bring it with you. Are you studying orcs? Yeah, whatever. Bring, no, bring no, it with No, no, they've it. got my book. Uh, he, 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 he took claim to the book that we found on the man. Now, you know that you cannot just lay claim to books that are part of the Candlekeep library. Uh, but that's Is it less important library? at the moment. Could be my book. Uh, it could be, but it is part of the library. Uh, let's, let's get out of here before we get into any more trouble. Any more trouble? All odd, odd, odd right, yeah. I believe with the I'll return book. the books that I had and and I'll follow her out. Okay, and you're gonna keep you're gonna keep the book on orcs. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Uh, okay, so she you guys are it's it's maybe two or three minutes to walk to her office uh, through the streets. Uh, again, more of the same. There's it's a very somber mood. Um, the when as as they're fixing some of the damage, they almost maybe seem to be trying to fortify some spots, uh, you know, doors, windows, things like that, which is not something you've ever seen here. You've never seen it as a fortified place. The uh, the magics normally protect from the need for that. So what's There's... going on? Why are we in trouble? I, I just think uh, we always in trouble. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Wizards. You, you, you're not, you're not wrong that we're you and now we are always in trouble. Uh, it wasn't just wizards this time, and uh, I, I know that that you you weren't here for it, but we were severely attacked yesterday. Uh, you know, let's let's go to my office, and so you you guys get to your office and go in, and she uh, she rings for some tea to come. And um, and tells you more about about what happened. I did hear about the attack. Was it the wizards? Some of them were wizards. No. Uh, some of them were traitorous bastards. Rogues. Um, it's rogue. uh, Wiz all the wizards went rogue. I knew it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, not quite all of them. Uh, on only only a few. Uh, and some rogues and even some druids. Um, but they were, uh, they were trying to, to rescue, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know. Uh, it's, it's, it's just bad. Lots of, lots of death. The outside walls, I'm sure as you saw coming in are, are pummeled. Um, lots of time to repair that, but it's, it, that's neither here nor there. Uh, I have something that I would like for you to do for me. Huh. Is it, it, it is a regular work or this under the table? Well, and she just smiles at you and does not say anything else about that. 
Oh, I'm saying Charmin, let's look at you working under the table now. <laughs> she, uh, it's 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 official, but we're all being very highly scrutinized. So, mum is still worried, but we don't know how to say mum. Let's just say it's officially under the table. How about that? Uh, and on the table, uh, much like it was the one of the the previous times you were in here, there's a book that is under a cloth. Um, and she she reaches over and pulls the cloth off of the book. Hold on, I get get the handout. Uh, show to players. Show to everyone. Um, and it is a uh, a, a book with uh, with brass fittings uh, on the corners and a brass clasp, and the the symbol of what appears to be a lemon tree on the front. Um, is anyone of a uh, noble, um, the, the, uh, occupation noble or does anyone have extensive knowledge of water deep? Is anyone proficient in history? <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I, yes. I, I, yes, actually. So, for some reason I've got criminal contact. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, hanging out with Cesar. I don't know why you'd have criminal contact. Not criminal, they're just pirates. There's a difference. The sailors, <laughs> upstand, upstanding sailors. Under under the table, sailors. Um, Up, upstanding because we don't have any chairs. If you would like to, uh, short two people. yeah, short two people. One's supposed to be showing up. <laughs> Professionals, everyone. Uh, if you would like to make a history check, uh, it, it may be that you can recognize. Sure. There we go. That's um, a 22. A 22. Absolutely. You, you recognize the symbol on the cover as the seal of the Yellowcrest family. Okay. Ooh, picture book. I'll try to pick you up. The yellow crest? And Tamras shakes her head, yes. Uh there uh there are some some pictures in there, Careless, near the back. Oh, okay. I'll have a look at the back then. Uh all right. The air around you suddenly grows chilly. Uh, cloud of vapor begins to shimmer along the nearby edges of the table, growing thicker around the, this fairly nondescript book. The mist... I'm going to turn my hindquarters a little bit so that I smack him in the head with my tail. <laughs> so he drops the book sh shut. The, the mist suddenly coalesces into the vague form of a young woman, a, a translucent spirit wearing a servant's uniform and bearing the symbol of a tree outlined by a rising sun on her shoulder, or at her shoulder. The, uh, the figure weeps, tears running down her cheeks. She opens her mouth as if to speak, which reveals that her tongue is gone. Moaning in anguish, she, she reaches towards you and then the mist shreds away to nothing and the spirit fades. That's bizarre. It's always a ghost in them books. I can go straight to the back to find a picture of Sarah. <laughs> um, Tom I Riss, smack uh, him again with my tail. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! Hey, Tom, Riss, Tom Riss looks at you all. Hey. At least it didn't suck you in like many of the books do. Books do here, apparently. What? Hmm? In in the uh, book. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, it, have you not spoken to Riala? That's story for another time. Um, she will. Uh, she will not take the book from you, but she will flip to the back, and um, there's a, a crude sketch of a a very disturbing looking book inside the book so it's like bookception um it, it, it is creepy enough in her sketch that it kind of gives all of you the the heebie-jeebies 
Um, the uh, the avowed are, are checking on on what they think this book is, and if that's the case, uh, this book, and she points to the picture, this book is very dangerous and should not be anywhere except locked away in a vault here where it can never be accessed. Um, why don't you take this? She closes the book and hands it to Carolus. Why don't you take this back to your tavern room, study it some, and um, I'll, I'll be by in a little bit to, to talk about what I would like for you to do. Sure. I give her a wink. Thinking that something's She's, going on. <laughs> she uh, she strangely smiles back at you, like, uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So you guys head back to your to the tavern. So where are you going to the stables? Where do you stay? Care care. Careless, you can't, you don't, I, you don't, you can't say that. You can't, I'm gonna step back. Um, she can't stay in the in the inn, they don't have, I, she big. can't, but she, she, she has a person if the inn will have her, um, and she will probably have your head for saying them things. It's coming out your mouth right now. Oh, I thought I was being genuine, <laughs> kid. Kid, I am, I'm. I'm they sorry. They provide ground room <laughs> floors, rooms. I apologize for horsing around. And I am going to check him with my rear end, <laughs> which is powerful enough, I guess, to knock him over. <laughs> uh, yeah, make a uh, a hindquarters attack, <laughs> uh, an, un <laughs> an unarmed strike. Uh and uh we'll yeah. we'll see if that beats his ac are you still like That's... half genie floating yeah <laughs> oh it depends if it's been well, longer it than 10 two. minutes then no yeah it's been longer <laughs> it's, than 10. it's been longer than 10. Uh, two <laughs> two misses a t a two. i'm sorry i'm sorry well so with a two she like goes to whack you but then kind of like just rubs up against you and so now you think something's going on with Keed. Oh. Careless has a whole story in his head. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to find a little page, man, that uh, brings us things. Have him bring me a uh, drink and figure out what we're going to do from here. Okay, so you guys head back to the tavern then, uh, mm -hmm. and into your 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 private room that uh, that has been set aside for you all. And uh, yeah, you've got you've got this book that uh, she said that you should all study. I look at the pictures. Uh, okay, uh, you uh, you start to start to dig through, and there are not only there aren't many sketches. There's some like some doodles, and then there's this sketch of this book that really kind of weirds all of you out and you're a couple of pages deeper and then there's a sketch of a monstrous creature with a bulbous head and long arms tentacles for legs and multifaceted eyes uh it is it is grotesque and none of you have ever seen anything like it I'm going to look for a written description of the creature, see what it said, what it does, and things of that nature. Because the picture doesn't say everything about it. Oh, that's true. Uh, there, there are no, there are no word descriptions around it. Uh, I will say that as you as you continue, you also find uh, what looks like part a sketch of part of a rune marked circle. Um, does anyone have Arcana proficiency? No. Yes. Roll it up. That's a 16. 
16 makes it. Uh, you recognize the, the the little bit of the sketch that there is as part of the ritual casting of Contact Other Plane. Mm-hmm. Um, I am going to try to slide the book away from him so I can look at the words in the book, not just the pictures. And I'm going to say we need to actually read this, okay. not just look for pictures. If, if there was only like two or three pictures, I would have got bored and just let someone else read it. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so you uh, you sit and, uh, and, and kind of read through it. And it's the, the early earliest pages are kind of nothing but repetitions of the name Sarah and as you as you go page by page by page the the repetitions get a little bit cleaner a little bit better uh, it, it seems as though someone was learning how to how to write and they started with a name and then practiced that just over and over and over uh, so that's maybe the first the first third ish of the book um, it, it branches out into other words and then eventually becomes uh, lists of household chores, um, pending activities, shopping lists, and um, and things like that. You know, to laundry, you know, dry the clothes, mend the master's shirt. Um, and so, yeah, it very much seems like someone who, who, who is learning how, how to read and write. Um, the... After that, it seems to actually become a diary. Uh, it, it is a bit of a first-hand account of the life of Sarah, who she describes herself as a servant in the Waterdeep Manor of Lord Vialis Yellowcrest and Lady Maria Yellowcrest. The diary entries are, they're not necessarily on consecutive pages. I don't, it's hard to tell. Maybe some pages were removed and you're not exactly sure why on that. Uh, most of them are undated, uh, but a few are, and, and the dates in them are no no more recent than five or six years ago. Um, in addition to writing about her daily obligations and, and life in the manor, she also writes about Lady Maria, who had come from a poor family and empathized with Sarah's own lack of education. And Lady Maria is the one who taught Sarah how to read and to write, and she gave her the leather-bound book that has turned into this diary. Okay, and where and do those pictures come in? The, those pictures? The of... pictures come in in the last few entries. Um, they are dated just a little over five years ago, and there's a marked change in tone of the writing. Um, a marked Sarah, change in tone, but is it a marked change in handwriting? Uh, no, the handwriting seems the same, although occasionally maybe a little bit hurried, as though it was being jotted down kind of quickly. Um, Sarah seems to be worried about the strange conduct of Lord Yellowcrest and his habit of spending too much time alone in his study with ancient books. Um, the final diary entry reads as follows. I stole close to Lord Vialis today and saw that he had chalked a circle marked with strange runes across the floor of his study. A puddle spread within the circle and appeared to me as a bubbling blood. Lord Vialis stood next to it motionless, one of his vile books in hand, and muttered something I could not hear. I slipped away quickly, though I fear he might have heard me this time. I have never been so scared, but I must tell Lady Maria what I have seen. Um, she then, a after that entry, she has drawn the cover of the book that you saw, and the, the sketch of the creature, maybe you into it is is on the book or maybe in the book, something that she had seen that was in the book rather than a creature that she has seen herself. But that's, that's speculation. You think she got caught up in whatever 
the man was trying to bring over here or possible is, is, is there an entry after that a uh, last entry in there that was the last one and so as you've been reading this have you been just reading it to yourself or are you reading any parts of it aloud i'll read i'll read uh more of the uh diary entries aloud the the, mm -hmm. the lists of chores and things of that no um but i'll read it aloud just loud enough that the um two sitting next to me will hear uh, so you are uh, you are all in a private uh i'm sorry i, I forgot that you haven't played with this before so off yeah. the tavern uh there are little mini demi plane rooms and so uh, these two chuckleheads are part of a group that has one. And so you come into the main tavern and see everyone. And then you guys go into your own little pocket room that is, is yours alone. Uh, and there, there are many, many pocket rooms in this tavern. Uh, I don't know that anyone really knows how many. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so you are, you're not at, um, at danger of being overheard by anyone. Oh, okay. Well then, yeah, no, I would have read uh, at least the diary entry portions out loud. Okay. So. So I'm wondering if the spectral image we saw earlier was the girl trapped in her own diary. Mm -hmm. As you mention the image, the mist again begins to form and take shape into that ghostly form that you had seen before. And again, she is she is crying and she she opens her mouth to, to try to speak. And it, it, it's clear as day that her tongue is is gone. It has been hacked free from her mouth. And all she can do is is moan and cry. Uh, but she does not dissipate this time. What are you moaning about? And she, oh, and she, <laughs> she looks at you, and then she looks and she points at the book. I know, ah, not enough oh, pictures. So she can't hear us. I can't. Uh, I'm going to flip back to the um, the final diary entry, where she mm -hmm. describes what she saw her master doing. This. And she she recoils like uh, none of you have you have all seen ghosts before none of you have ever seen a ghost frightened i mean it is more frightening than than a ghost who has seen a, a paladin do turn undead uh she is shockingly frightened at seeing the pictures and and attempts to hide behind carolus and and not be seen by the book i close the book for her she uh she's still crying she she's not moaning but she she comes to you and or she she comes out from behind careless and she she nods to you and what you assume is a thankful way if only oh. had a cleric i'm right here <laughs> can you speak with dead can i speak with dead and even consider that <laughs> shows you how often i Often I play with clerics. Okay, hold on. <laughs> but could she speak? She didn't have a tongue. Or do you need a corpse? I think you need a corpse, but uh, let's see if Cesar has it first. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I don't have it prepped. I think uh, I took it oh. out because the last time I used Caesar was before a big battle. I knew, <laughs> and... I knew we had a good cleric. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh, that's fine. I do this. <laughs> Amy isn't here to be our good player. Say West Real. <laughs> uh, how about yes and no questions? Since you can't, you know. She she seems amenable to that. Uh, is is that what what did you in? the she she ponders what you're saying and 
and then shakes her head no. It's your master, do you win? The the tears just pour from her face and she very, very timidly shakes her head yes. Is he still is he still there? Um she she doesn't she's not sure. She's dead. Um she doesn't right. really keep up with the whereabouts of <laughs> I figure it was like recent dead. I don't know how long. Uh, well, so the last journal entry was uh, just over five years ago. Okay. 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 Kid, you're asking better questions than I am. What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> I should not be asking the only questions, though. Uh, yeah. Did your master do anything to your mistress? More tears and and more affirmative nods. And then she she makes she puts her arms kind of like uh, as though she were rocking a baby, and then it kind of does you know some hand motions as as though you know small, maybe a little bit older, maybe a little bit older. They had a child as well. And she says yes, and then she does again the the three different um, sizes. Two children. She again does three different sizes. Three children. Uh, and and she nods yes at the three. You got to forgive us. We're a bit stupid. <laughs> Did they all suffer the same fate? Uh, she she crumples in half, but you can still see that that she is nodding. If the moan has come back and the the ghostly tears just seem to just be pouring from her. Hmm. Do you have any questions? And she looks up at you and you get the feeling she's trying to think of how to ask something, but with no Uh, tongue. Can uh, can you write? That's what I was going to ask. If you can open to a blank page in the diary. I'm. Yeah. No, go ahead. She, she reaches over to touch the page and her hand just passes through it. She is a ghost. She is incorporeal. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is steam on a mirror. Can you speak to other ghosts without a tongue? Uh, she looks at you and again gives that I'm not sure kind of look. She doesn't, that has never been asked to her. Hmm. Could be worth a try. I pull out a gilded skull and I summon forth from it an undead spirit. Interesting. Okay, tell me about the undead spirit. It is to summon undead is an undead spirit it can speak the language understands the languages I speak <clears throat> no idea hmm. if it'd work or not yeah I, I, and neither this is the look of someone who had not even considered that um I'm uh let's see let's give it, give it the old chance here um can, can you communicate with your yes. your undead? Okay. Uh, uh, it understands the languages that I speak. But can you communicate with it? Can it can it speak to you? Uh, it doesn't say anything about that. It just says languages understands the languages you speak. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll allow it. It, it is. Uh, 
it is diff we'll say it is difficult and broken but that it can it, it can make out some of what she's saying so i will i will allow you guys to ask a, a couple of more questions that lasts for an hour Um, I ask my undead spirit to communi to try communicating with her, and it and to see if they can communicate. Yeah, as as I say, it, it, they can. It's a little bit broken, uh, so she she may try to say an entire sentence, and he may be able to get fifty percent of the words. Yes. What do you want us to do? The 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 word that comes back is you get two words back. The first one is help and the second one is avenge. Okay, that one I know how to do. This put this point to where you a yes or no question. Do you want us to help the family and avenge your death? She 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 gives a a, a yes and no. Uh, give me give me a roll me just roll me a d two, or or roll me one d six one d six and was tell me even or odd. Odd. You part of what you have said yes, and part of what you have said no. So you're you're on track, but you're you've you've kind of mixed up a couple of questions in her mind. Where do we go? The she looks at your spirit, and and you see them trying to communicate a little, and the thing that you get back from yours is water deep. And you hear a knock on the door, well, that's and she cool. and she turns, and then her form kind of evaporates. Okay. Who is it? I mean, uh, the door. <laughs> what's the, what's the password? Come in. So what's the password? Uh, the door. <laughs> the door opens, and uh, it's Master Master Sage Thomas. Okay. I see uh, you. You have, for once, for the first time ever, been uh, doing what I asked and studying the book. Uh, how did you like the pictures, Careless? I was only a couple. <laughs> well, and she closes the door, <laughs> and she, and she, she kind of looks at at the the spirit that you have conjured. Kind of interested, and. Uh, Pulls up a seat and and uh, takes a drink from the tray. What uh, what have you learned? We got to go to Waterdeep to help her and avenge her. There's we learned, uh, children. Violus uh, is was up to some tin terrible. Yes, oh, the yes, um... there was some text in the book. Um, <laughs> key, key read it. The um, that's actually quite, quite good job that you've all done. The uh, yes, Waterdeep is where I would like you to go to, to try to find out uh, what happened to uh, to Lord Vialis. The uh, as the story goes, and she uses her dragonborn claws to make air quotes when she says story. Um, Lord Yellowcrest was away on business and returned to find his wife and two sons and daughter and the four servants brutally murdered. And shocked into a depression, he, he sold all of his stuff and left Waterdeep to be alone with his grief. <laughs> that's not what she told us that's not the story we got at all the uh, that's not surprising the the avowed believe that the book 
that she has made a drawing of is a deeply evil tome named Retribution of the Ancients and that it can be used to contact entities on other planes and perhaps bring them across the planes into our world to to wreak havoc. Um, mm -hmm. They think it's from the outer planes, but, but not exactly sure where. Um, and so... I'm going to reopen the book. That's what she uh, saw him do before she perished. Her master did the perish... Uh, had murdered her, basically. Yes, I, I, I think that she's not the only one. I think that he also murdered his wife and his kids and the rest of the servants. Mm -hmm. That's me. It's pure speculation, but if you're into this sort of evil and she'll reference the the drawing of the book you uh you have very little concern for family and and friends so yes i would like you to go to waterdeep and see if you can unravel what happened uh bring lord vialis to justice find that book put it under wraps and bring it back here to be stored in a place where it can never be accessed. Did we get paid from last time? I can't remember, Caesar. I, I, I believe we did. As soon as we got back, we got we got paid. Oh, okay. And you'll be paid for this one as well. Um, should you be able to find the book and Lord Vialis you will be paid and she looks at you careless directly a lump sum together not individually <laughs> 5,000 gold pieces oh, nice. uh, and your travel expenses will be paid you know what that means everybody <laughs> shopping trip <laughs> <laughs> after after you bring Lord Fialis to justice and bring the book back here. What did we get paid last time? That's out of character. <laughs> uh, I think last... Actually, I don't remember. That was... I know that in the last game, they got paid 6,000, but that was for something... Oh, that, okay. that, there, were, there were several people paying. I don't remember what you guys get paid in the first episode. The first I've got 1,050, so I'm assuming we've been paid. Yeah, same here. Okay, uh, so that's 5,000 um, each and travel expense is nice. Not 5,000 each. But, but as a whole, it's 5,000. So you be take, your, your cut's probably going to be... Uh, let's see. Before you do, do too much... Can't too much math. <laughs> before you do too much math, um, uh, Bertram will, uh, will meet you en route. He has been um, Poor old monk. taking care of something for me. It doesn't, um, it doesn't even like fighting. Well, well if it's fighting. between four, that's that's about twelve thousand or twelve hundred each. Twelve. He, uh, he can take his time. I still owe him money. He likes <laughs> to fight. He just doesn't like to kill. Um. And while it has been nice that you have sent us in your last journey, a ruffian who became uh, a brand new acolyte initiate, uh, as well as Edward has worked out, uh, please don't send anyone you might meet back this way to work for us. Um, I am in enough trouble already. It's a it's a family trait of mine to to send people back to, <laughs> to places of my employment for care. <laughs> we'll try not to do that. What do we do with uh, if should we find him? What are we doing with him? He's a wizard. Let's just kill him. <laughs> He's a wizard. 
Do you want to question I him? Actually, I actually don't know if he's a wizard or not. I I want justice done, whether that is at the hands of officials in Waterdeep or wherever you find him, or at the end of one of your blades. Um, I care not. I want justice done. And that is why this is an official under the table thing. I'm like a careless. You heard them. Bring them in cold. And I cock my trident like a gun. Cesar, do you do you have inspiration? D20 uh, inspiration? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, no, I don't. Take take D20 inspiration. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, is there anything else that, uh, that you require before you get on the way? No. How are we getting to Waterdeep? Are we... Are we oh, yeah. Is... <laughs> well, the fastest way is by ship. Um, you may go to the stables and request a, uh, a cart that will take you, uh, be a few hours to get down to the coast to, uh, the shipping lanes and... Then catch a boat headed for Waterdeep. Can't you just teleport us? I could, yes, but I know how much you really hate all those goddamn wizards and wouldn't want you to uh, have to suffer the ill effects of wizard magic, Carolus. Oh, and she get and she gives you a wink, and she heads out the door. Oh, I thought she was going to teleport out just to just to <laughs> As she as she's headed at the door, she has, she she gives you reluctantly, Cesar, the other half of a sending stone pair. And I don't know if anyone watched oh, great. The, the, <laughs> the, the first arc, but this is a very old one where you like press the button to send. Uh, uh, all right, so the the three of you are again alone uh, in your private tavern room. <clears throat> but uh, can go to the stables and and request a cart to carry you to the shipping lanes. To carry those two to the shipping lanes. <laughs> okay, I that's mean... fair. <laughs> you can carry both of us, can't you? No. <laughs> All right, well, uh, any, I, any... I wasn't I wasn't gonna ask that seems uh invasive. <laughs> uh any, anything you things. guys need to do in the city? I mean, you pretty much are fully stocked, so I don't know that there's anything that you need. Mm, no, I no, think I'm I think, good. I think I'm as well. Uh okay. And so are you guys taking the book? Yes. yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in my my pack. Okay. Uh, all right. So you guys head out into the uh, the main area of Candlekeep, into the main city. This is a gigantic map, so forgive. It takes a little while to load. Oh wow, and it's still set up from the last battle. Good job, buddy. Good job. Um, let me get some reveal going here. Uh, yeah, so you guys are at the hearth uh, down here in the... I've got a ping going. It's on the right-hand side near the bottom. And the uh, smithy and stables is uh, where you'll head to find yourself a cart. All right, we'll go there then. Uh, okay, so you, you walk up and no one initially pays you a whole lot of notice. They're just kind of busy doing their day-to-day -day stuff. Excuse, 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 excuse me. I, we would we'd like to get a cart for to to, to go. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, four hundred gold. 
two minutes of uh did stage top all right two fine yeah no, we, we don't look stupid well, you might i'm not stupid we do we do look stupid we look very stupid yeah oh, when I you know. say we don't look stupid <laughs> he looks at you and he goes <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you said you want to. You said you want to buy a cart. I, no, no, we want to take a cart. Rent a cart, or it's gonna. It should come back here. I. Do, I don't I know how your 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 loan turns out to your, your retainers here. We want to go to Waterdeep. Which we need to get to oh. port. And we need. What to, you and, want is a boat, and then he'll turn around and go back to working. I'm going. <laughs> okay. Kill him. <laughs> no, not not. Okay, let's not remember why you keep saying we hate wizards. Excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, so, fair point. He is not a wizard. <laughs> he is someone who is working at the at the at the smithy and stables. Is it still Every... within an hour? Because my undead creature is still with me. <laughs> yeah, we'll say it's still with you, just because that's creepy as hell. Excuse me, sir. We need use of a cart to get to port. I was told to come here to get a cart. We. Thought it was included in the contract. But you said we're buying the cart? Uh, oh, well, no, I mean, no. I mean, that's I don't even have one to sell. Actually, I just was telling you what the price was. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can uh, we can get you down there. Uh, it's it's probably four or five hours down there. But uh, but yeah, I've got a great got a great little model right over here. We'll put you right in. And there's a, a just a beautiful decked out. Um, I, I don't really know much about carriages, but it's think of the ones that have the, the nice top and the side doors, and it is it is beautifully equipped, gilded in, in gold and silver. And um, he walks right past that one <laughs> onto just one that is, is just like some planks of wood on some wheels. And maybe just the... Uh, just the, the the scrawniest horse that you have seen in in many years. Uh, I mean, if you look at him, he almost. <laughs> I uh, I say to the undead creature, I say, and I, I say, no, you cannot eat him. He will he will do right in the end, and I'll use deception or intimidation or whatever you want to use. <laughs> to try to intimidate him, or what are you trying to intimidate him to do? We want the good one. So you want the. Un- so does the good creature. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Let's so roll intimidation. Uh, I got plus ten. Hopefully, an animal that can pull it too. <laughs> I, I pull out a dagger and start cleaning my nails. I rolled a six and just so that's tapping one of my front hoofs. I would, I kid. I would not ask you to pull a card for us, but. I would, we're trying to get this worked out. Do so I get advantage because I've got a scary undead creature with me? Yeah, sure. I'm just Ready. waiting. I mean, the 16, the 16, there... the 16 worse. beats him. Okay. The 16 beats him, so. Uh, so it's part of your contract yes. to, to, to take this cart. Yes, the fastest meaning means. Well, this one certainly is not fast. It's just extravagant. You see That's all the fine. gold on it? That's fine. No, fast is a new slang word that can be, can be used to mean nice. Yes. This one's fine. Ah. We'll take this ah, one. Ah, yes. Uh, okay. I'll so I on. I will just... Uh, it, so as you open the door, there are two guards inside who immediately round, round upon you. <sighs> I, I, are you going to... you have permission from... Why are you in from, my car? From, you have permission from King Jorhas to take his carriage? Oh, it's his. <laughs> oh, if he yeah, doesn't mind. Yeah, he's... Uh, well, I, I'm going to need a little more than if he doesn't mind. I mean, his his guys are... Uh, I, I, are you sure you won't take the little one? I said to the guards, you can, you can escort us. They'll take you? the little one, but they need a better... We need worse yeah, than that bag. <laughs> she looks at you and goes. <laughs> <laughs> and she and she tries to like beef up and look strong. Is it gonna die here? Uh, well, well, we'll we'll roll about that. We'll see. Uh, 
Well, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I could change, I could change the, the horse. Yeah, I, I, you know, if I let this, this, this is the king's personal carriage. If I let this go, man, they, I'm, I'm fired or worse. Uh, no, they don't want the king's carriage. They are what? fine with that one. And I'm gesturing at the, the small smaller carts, one. The, the utility but the cart. horse is not acceptable. Uh, okay, uh, and he he turns around and whistles and and points to a couple of guys and points towards that horse and they they nod and it, it seems as though they're bringing over a a capable looking horse. I look at the two Thanks. guards. Say, good job. Keep keep going, and I'll close it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they they just deadly stare you down, and they were they were ready to pop shit off. <laughs> Um, yeah, so they, they bring out a, uh, a, a much better, stronger, younger looking, looking horse. And, uh, it, it's a war llama. Uh, they bring out a, a much stronger looking horse and they, uh, the original one, the, the, the guy goes over and he's kind of, you know, patting her on the head. I, yeah, I just, I can't, uh, can't bear to let her, uh, to let her not work. You know, she, she worked all her life and. And she's she's always been a good horse, so I try to I try to give her some jobs to do. Probably not ones that will take ten hours round trip. Well, and honestly, she might do better out in pasture. And she looks at you, and it is it is gone from now that she's with like her owner, and and he's you know scratching us out of her head. She, her look goes from trying to look puffed up to who the fuck are you <laughs> and then she fucking rounds and turns on you and just shows you her wrinkly decrepit ass and kind of hobbles off away from you uh, all right let's get out of here before we get in the fight with the guards and an old horse <laughs> i won't fight an old horse i will she's older than my grandmother <laughs> So Bertram isn't actually here yet, he, but thank you, Pike, for joining us. It's lovely to have you. Welcome. Um, yeah, so you, you, the, the more capable horse uh, is, is hitched up to the, the very small wagon. And uh, so it, Careless and Cesar are going to cram into it, but uh, Keed is not. Is that what I'm understanding? Oh, you're muted. I will keep game. pace with it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So they uh, it, true to form. It, it it takes four or five hours to get down there. It is. It, it's basically uh, nightfall as you're getting there, and um, take a short rest. Uh, okay. I was gonna say you could hang out in the tavern, okay. uh, but we can do a short rest as well. I will do a short rest on the way there, won't we? Well, if we're sitting in the car. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You can. It's not comfortable, but over four hours, you can get a short rest. Warlocks, you know. There's splinters and uh, nails that are not fully driven in anymore. I don't think this um, is a cart. I think he just put two planks together and didn't put a axle between them and called it a cart. I... <laughs> um, yeah, and so you guys uh, get down <clears throat> to the, the little the little port area. And uh, the, it's it's kind of like a, like a gold rush town. There's a lot of things that are just set up. Uh, a little bit ramshackle, and you can see several, several ships out on uh, a makeshift harbor, and there's one tavern, and um, you know, folks are milling around and, and kind of starting to head that way. So, would you guys like to go into the tavern? Yes. <laughs> yes. It is big enough to accommodate centaurs. It's they're very friendly there. Uh, sure. <laughs> Yes. Awesome. All right. So uh, you guys go in, and like I say, it's 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 getting to be kind of around dinner time. So it's it's not busy and bustling, but it's not empty. It's it's kind of on that that starting to fill up trajectory, and um, looking uh, looking over in the corner, uh, Carolus and Cesar, you see the very familiar face 
of Bertram, who just got up and walked off camera. Uh, there, okay, here he is. He's back. Uh, you see him sitting in a corner, just having a bite to eat, and uh, Bertram yeah. notices you, and... <laughs> I'm going to go right, right up to him instead of his table. So what do you do, Bertram? He talks to... You're already muted. He's, He's oh, still he's... muted. He's still muted talking to Kira. <clears throat> you, you did. <laughs> Sorry, still double click. Settled. There you go. No sweat. No sweat. Uh, your timing is could not be more perfect, though. So they, oh, you have just seen walking into, um, walking into the tavern that you're in. You're you're at the 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 makeshift port uh, down the way from Candlekeep. Uh, it's dinner time. Um, it's starting to fill up a little bit. You're having a, a little bite to eat. And you see walking in the front door, uh, Cesar and Carolus, and they are with uh, a centaur. Cesar. I what? what? Well, news do you have? Uh, I was just getting to that. So, uh, haunted book, uh, dead girl, um, uh, some aristocrats out in water deep summoning things between planes. We've got to go avenge deaths and or uh, bring him to justice. And it's 500 so gold pieces each. It's the five normal then, yeah. Thousand gold pieces for the group. Excellent. <laughs> um, this is Keed. Nice to meet you. She's a horse. Uh, hmm. I'm going to kick him. <laughs> Ro roll uh let's let's say let's like this if you're gonna kick and do that it's an athletics and uh i have a hooves attack I can, I can, I can oh you have a hooves attack absolutely i, I can never attack. be surprised so would that be I, initiative then that, that that's a three oh, for uh the wishes. attack i dodge out no, of the way but i forgot to i forgot to roll the uh the attack itself so uh, that's a 30 20 <laughs> for three damage but that would all depend on if you beat my initiative because i can't be surprised you can't be surprised but if i, I mean, see that's it a coming little... i could probably act well, before well right but it was so that would yeah you I'll give you a chance to, uh, to to roll your athletics to 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 beat that or acrobatics, your choice. Because again, it's not about surprise because she didn't have uh, advantage. Yeah. But she still gets an attack on me though. <laughs> As you can see, she fits in real well. <laughs> it's nice to see someone can keep him in check. Wow, there's not been a whole lot of checking just yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were you able to, to beat her a dirty? I rolled an eight. <laughs> so it's just it's just three. So it, it's it's just kind of a just just a. Uh, oh, oh. That was Stop a very friendly. Me. Rolled a DC nineteen charisma save. <laughs> Lord, I'm gonna like, wait, have a drink. Wait, what? Here. A DC 19 charisma save. Good lord. Charisma save. Caesar, maybe you can fill me in on some of the it's details so while they settle this. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So <laughs> That's an 11. She disappears. So anyway, anyway I'm rubbing my shin. Did you just banish her? <laughs> I let her back within about 12 seconds. Oh my god. <laughs> Wow, we're an hour and a half in, and I have lost complete control. Oh, right. I love it. That's fine. We'll see where I uh, relieve myself later. <laughs> I'm sitting there rubbing my leg. And all uh, you food. were. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they will. Uh, you, you order some food and some drinks, and uh, it's it is definitely it'll be over momentarily. Uh, Caesar and and Bertram, I think we're actually going to talk about the job for a moment. No. <laughs> so right, Caesar, as I was saying. Uh... Yeah. So um, 
we're, we're, we're sailing for Waterdeep first thing in the morning. Um, finding out what this man did uh, because we, the ghost in the book told us that he was doing something with the uh, retribution of the agents. Um, something about bringing things from other planes to other planes. I I don't know. The the centaur is the best read out of all of us. Um, probably ended up killing his family and his servants and everyone else in his in his house. So we got to find out what he did. Um, find a book he was using and bring that book back to Canada Keep. So this this haunted book is this a a different like specter within a book than the last yes, one we yes. dealt with uh-huh yep yep i feel like this happens <laughs> more than is more than is probable it's a haunted it's a it's a magical library Bertram. i think every book in there's got somebody in it uh i don't like that i don't well, like see, it at all sage Talmud said it was lucky we didn't get one that we got sucked into so let's call it this one a win okay nope i agree i don't <laughs> Um. So, quick question, DM buddy: Am I on my way also to Waterdeep, or am I where I'm supposed to be? Uh, you. This is the stopover point that we had discussed in uh, in Discord. So, yes, you were Waterdeep is also your destination. Um, Excellent. And this was the stopover where uh, you made the change. Making some changes. Cool. Making some changes. Um. Have I procured a ship yet? Or are we still looking? Uh, yeah, you uh, you have 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 brokered passage to okay. uh, with with uh, with a, a local captain and and his ship. We have cool. got to talk to Tomrin about putting transportation in our contracts because this sending us out into the world thing without. <laughs> well, Caesar, I've got good news. I've just procured a ship <laughs> for some <laughs> for some other business, <laughs> also in Waterdeep, and. Uh, I'm sure Will we can there find be room space for you enough all. for us to add? Uh, well, we are we are a bit we are a bit full, but I'm sure we can squeeze up. We can double up cabins or maybe triple in some cases. But uh, it won't uh, be comfy. But we've got a ship. How's how's the crew? Uh, you're looking at it. This is like a captain. Yeah. Not 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 anymore. Not anymore. Look! Look at me! Look at me! Look at me! <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Save a line at least. <laughs> I, <laughs> look, look, look at me! Look at! I'm the captain now. There we go. <laughs> uh, well, I guess in a few minutes when we go to break, I'll have to roll up some stats for the captain, so he and Cesar can uh, can fight. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna throw him over, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> can I do a perception check in the bar for um, people who look seafaring and will work for cheap? Uh, I imagine there is a, a crew, but we okay, have okay, okay, agreed to work for some passage. Yeah, I mean, and if you want to do that, you uh, you certainly may roll your perception. We've got to work. It was the cheapest way to find a ship. Oh my god, I forgot how he was built. That's 27. <laughs> yeah, there there are several people in here that you think you could approach to 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 hire or even like hoodwink into working for you. Uh and you actually see someone at the bar who is familiar to you. And as you're looking at him, like, hey, I know that guy. He looks up and sees you. I owe money, don't I? uh, uh, No, Uh, you might. I don't know. Uh, He sees you and he says, Shaka, brah. Oh, no. No. And that is where we're going to take kill him. our break. Welcome back, everyone. To <laughs> Keeping Candles Mysterious. The, uh, the, the party has, has been tasked with uh, some, some retribution 
some uh, some some bringing someone to justice, getting some revenge for some uh, for some callous murders, uh, and from finding a, uh, a a tome that is palpable evil between two covers, and and bringing it back safely to Candlekeep. They have just just arrived at a tavern in a uh, little makeshift port, not too far from water from um, Candlekeep, and uh, have run into their pal Bertram. And they're all going to make their way in the morning to Waterdeep. And they have just found a friend of theirs from uh, an early adventure, uh, Mick Featherlight. So, Mickey, as he's going by right now, because that's hip, <laughs> uh, Mickey turns to the bartender and, and says, you know, oh, it's, it's kind of some quick motioning and comes over to your table with just a tray of all manner of what I would call white boy shots. Uh, just nothing that you really want to drink, but that that people do. Cause it's all lemon, it'll get lemon you, drops and yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll get you drunk. Um, uh, bros, what's up? How you been? Oh, gosh, you can't believe I'm seeing you here. Shaka! And he takes a shot. Uh, yeah, sh Shaka. Uh, DC 19 Christmas <laughs> Eve. <laughs> uh, that's only an 18 <laughs> did you just banish him he doesn't have a plus 7 to charisma I was he, does, he, he doesn't he only has a plus 4 um, if you can imagine I was like, uh, that's not bad right? <laughs> uh, did you banish him no Oh, okay, okay. I mean, because he he would have been into it, man. I mean, depending uh, on where you sent him. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, what what's going on? What you guys into? Is get you guys need anything? Unless you have a larger ship. He starts patting himself down. No, man. What about magical items? Well, then I. <laughs> uh well uh, these drinks are pretty these drinks are pretty magic themselves uh, shaka and he does another another shot how many of those have you had already tonight mickey what <laughs> as i expected <laughs> what's new in town mickey Oh, not a whole lot. I uh, I, I left Valen in, in charge of the of the small outpost, and uh, I'm headed up to to, to Water Deep to to try to procure some new uh, some new suppliers for some for some for some adventuring gear. We're also headed that way ourselves. Ah, Shaka. But we'll get the next point. Shaka. Yep. <laughs> So you might want to slow down on those. No, not like that stuff looks like it'll rot your gut right out. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'm just gonna throw it all up on the sea anyway. I'm not, I'm not super good on the water, so. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna reach in my bag and pull out a tankard and uh, <laughs> just say, you know what? Have use this the rest of the night. Just you can you can borrow it for a few hours. It'll. Just, you'll thank me for it. And he he picks it up. Is it the kind with the little the thumb with the the handle lid? Yeah. He yep. he flips it up and he's like, "Dude, brah. and then proceeds to just attempt to chug. What uh, what is it you have given him? Uh, it's a tankard of sobriety. Tankard of sobriety. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping it would be some sort of like tankard of unending drink, like the like the ewer of unending wine, and he's just like drowning himself. No, no, um, no. I'm I'm gonna see if I can help him just like slow down a little bit. So does it instantly uh, make him sober? Uh, it doesn't make him sober, but any any beverage you pour into it, uh, basically. It makes it like, makes it nullifies it. Yeah, it nullifies any alcohol that you put into it. He uh, he's like, ah, oh, this thing is great, and he'll like take all the remaining shot glasses and pour them into the tankard. Exactly. And, uh, there you go. And start and start sipping on that. I'm gonna. Hey, I, 
I'll catch up with you guys. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll see you on the ship. Woo! Uh, Please be a yeah. different boat. Okay. <laughs> I'll yeah, just catch me later, and I'll I'll take that back whenever you're done with it. And uh, and Mickey will uh, will will walk away into the into the bar and is just chatting up other folks. And so you, your food and your drinks have come, and uh, it's busy. So you're in relative aloneness no one's paying attention to you and you're not really paying attention to anyone else all right so what's the word on the on the ship that we're getting on then who's running it uh i i don't even have a much of a name it's kind of was short notice uh i needed to uh switch ships pretty quickly so uh it's whatever was open at the time when I pulled into Harbor. He's, uh, I forget his name. Salty somebody. I will have to live with that. What is your business uh, in Waterdeep aside from helping us? I had a, uh, Master Thomas uh, sent me a self uh, to uh, pick up some refugees. So I'm uh, escorting them up to Waterdeep. We had to uh, leave in a bit of a hurry, but uh, we got to port okay, and I managed to uh, switch ships without too much trouble. Well, nobody does any. Sorry, I'm sorry. What? It's a, uh, I said I was saying it's a, a noble deed as any. Ferian refugees. It went surprisingly smoothly, to be honest. Well, they still, still got one last leg of the journey to make. Oh, uh, they still. Got, oh, well, all right. Well, you don't have to. Yeah, I'm say yeah. Kind of, uh, kind of, kind of curse just yeah. like that. Curse right yeah. now. Yep. <laughs> Look at the DM thinking things up over there. Now. <laughs> I'm saying everything went fine and there were no problems. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Wait a minute. This is the first time anything ever went wrong. <laughs> yes. So you think we could manage to get room on on your ship for the three of us to fit as well? As I said, uh, I mean, it's, it's not the best ship, not the largest ship, and we've got quite a few refugees. So yes, it'll be crowded, but we could we could squeeze in yeah there'll, there'll okay. be room on the on the top deck for sure if says, if any if, the DM. if anything you can you can uh use the space wherever my bunk is and then combine the two spaces if you need that i'll be once i get on a ship i'll probably just start working and moving around and doing things or sleep in the crow's nest or whatever you can sleep up there you can sleep up there is that safe you can sleep up there Okay. <laughs> I don't know how useful I'll be on the ship. Fine. I've never you, been on one before. As long as you uh, can pull a rope. When someone says pull a rope, you should be just fine. I think I can do that. It'd be a leagues more useful than Shaka Man over there. Otherwise, it's mostly just learning how to stay out of the way. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet <I've> Careless <laughs> excels at that. <laughs> a plus 25 to staying out of the way. Yeah. It's my highest skill. <laughs> <laughs> um. All of you roll a perception check for me, please. Oh boy. For perception check. Perception. I rolled a natural one. Oh, uh, that's good. 15. 18. 17. Okay, so Keed, you're uh you're just kind of looking around and you notice that there is sitting by herself uh a woman at a table who is staring at your table not not angrily but very very inquisitively staring at, at all of you uh, 
at your, all of us? Uh, just the, 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 your your whole general table area. I catch her eye. And and she and she looks at you and and smiles. I wave her over. She will uh oh, and she'll pick up her cup of tea. And she she walks kind of slowly. Uh she She's not advanced in age, but it, it seems like there's definitely is some some mileage, you know, uh, kind of on her bones a bit. And um, you see, uh, you see her come up to the table and hello, how are you? She looks friendly. I hate this. <laughs> You clearly got teeth like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're pretty, they're pretty funky. And again, she she moves pretty slow for someone who looks to be kind of only middle aged, so and with sharpened teeth. What race is she? With the shawl on, it's it is hard to tell. She's some sort of near human. Um, <clears throat> some kind the, of human uh, adjacent. <laughs> yeah, some sort of human adjacent. <laughs> We, it's we are we are fine. How how are you? <laughs> I I am well. I forgive me for intruding. I I I couldn't help but notice that. Uh, and she will look keyed at your bag. I couldn't help but notice you you carry a heavy burden there. Well, sin will do that to you. Mm. Right. Uh, well, um... She'll take a sip of tea while she watches <laughs> all of you not know what to do. Okay, bye. Mm, ah, well. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The... Okay. <laughs> and she will turn uh, and begin to shuffle away from you. I turn around to the group. Fruitcake. <laughs> no, thank you, dear. I'm not hungry. Oh no, I don't like that. She can still hear us. Um, Does this woman <laughs> wish us harm. Is she just nosy? Oh no, roll an insight. Yeah, can I insect this woman? Absolutely. <laughs> 16. It Six. does not seem that she that she uh, means you all harm. Uh, she is. If you had to put her towards a type uh, that you have seen uh, before, you would say that maybe she's a uh, some sort of uh, fortune teller or prognosticator. Um, you know, someone who, whether she does or not, thinks that she sees connections and things and 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 knows things beyond knowing was she in the room when we originally were talking about the book in which room this room in the tavern when i was filling us um, we were bertrand Yes. Uh, you didn't notice her. Um, it, it's possible that she was. Um, again, there've been there've been a lot of folks coming and going. Uh, but you guys were. She was far enough away that had she been in the room, she probably wouldn't have heard what you said. Did did did. Do you want to invite her back over here to converse further about our baggage? What, 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 what. She, she looks pretty scary. By this, point, by this point, she's made it back to her table and sits down and <laughs> is not staring at you, but she's just kind of like drinking her tea and, and looking about the rest of the room. Yeah, I don't like attracting attention like this. So to... 
We we talk to her or just leave? She looks scary. I mean. This is my favorite part when you're all trying to figure out what my play is and you just stare at me on the Zoom. Yeah. You're just looking at me and I'm looking at you. I don't you. know what to do. I'm looking at Bertram because apparently we're the brain cells now. Um... I'm eating. <laughs> say, 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 we're the brain cells with my eight intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> for, for, for this group, that sounds about. Oh my god. I'm with you, mate. I'm with you. That's mine's mine's nine. So we're doing all right. I say I've got so, nothing but gut instincts, and that's about mine's it. Mine's thirteen. So uh... there we go. Gut instincts say maybe don't mess with this woman. Your gut oh. instincts say don't mess with this. Woman. Yeah. No, I don't. Something about her. Catches right. me wrong. Kid, what you think? You got you got to look in your eye, like in. What could it be that catches like, you wrong? Like uh, a nose, her eyes, uh, a teeth. Teeth are fine. It's the vibe, the whole like. <laughs> well, shoot. You carry she looked a right at my pack. And that's just rude. Yes, but that particular part of my pack had. With, with the book. Mm -hmm. Yep. She's got teeth like a goblin. With, your, with the teeth. <laughs> Just come off the teeth, please. With... <laughs> goblin have teeth like that. <laughs> a lot of people have teeth like that. If you go to the dentist, they can file it down like that. We have dents? <laughs> <laughs> so, we call it a night, and... Uh, keep an extra eye on the, on our yeah. wares. Just keep well, an eye out. All right, and I'll double check that all my pockets on my pack are uh, sealed. I don't think yeah. she's gonna Every, pickpocket us. I think everything she's seems just fine. Taylor's. Do you guys have lodging for the night? No, we Not don't. Yet. We just, just got into town and <laughs> oh. came right here. First thing we did, Careless jumped off the car and came right to the bar. That sounds like Careless. Because <laughs> I knew we had to meet you here. <laughs> sure thing, Careless. <laughs> uh, hang on. Are well, we staying in the keep tonight or are we finding our own lodging? 28 deception. Oh, you know what? With a 28 deception. <laughs> I mean, is, oh, thank you. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Unless you can roll, uh, roll out of that with a. Uh, would that be an insight? Can you insight out of that twenty-eight? No, uh, I Bertram? can't get even close to that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it for sure seems like Carolus was coming here to meet you. Though how he knew you'd be right I'm here sorry, is a little I'm... strange, but. I send. Uh... Hoping to get into port with. Uh, less news of travel than that, but uh, I think glad you came to meet me all the same. I sent Keed a magical message. I think, uh, I think I should look after the book, I can hide it, and I will flat out just respond no. I see. Okay. There was only those three pictures. I'm talking about <laughs> hiding it in case she steals it. But if she steals it, it's your fault. Do you motion toward her and... when you say that? No. Which do you motion toward the lady? No, no, I'm talking bye bye message. Okay. Oh, you're just using message back and forth. So since I just and Bertrand, you're, just, you're just watching these two obviously have a message conversation without you. Uh, well, now I know how this feels. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I just roll my eyes and I finish off what my... I need a lot to eat. So I finish yeah, they, off what's you know, on they, my plate. They, they brought you like like 
it, it, imagine like a sampler platter, but it was like each sample was a full like size entrees. serving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they 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 they're clued in. They they know what's up. What's the name of this place again? Where do we go? <laughs> yeah, buddy, name all of your inns and NPCs for us, please. Uh, this one is called the Portside Tavern. It's in the notes now. <laughs> You're stuck with it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I love it. Uh, all right. You guys uh, can't seem to put eyes on that old woman anymore. Great. Or that woman anymore. Good. Hate that. Yep. Good. Uh, it's, it, don't worry, but I'm sure she won't show up again. She will, but she'll be married to Shaka Breath. <laughs> Shaka Breath's <something>. mom. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, so, she's uh, one of the refugees. Bertram, you uh, you notice that that Mickey's still hanging out with people, but he he has not seemingly gotten any drunker, and maybe he's even started to sober up a little bit and is is not kind of the party center that you would normally think of him as. It's better for him. <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys going to... Let's, uh, let's hit the hay down. and... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Good one. <sighs> I've got a bed then. Uh-huh. I know that one was inten- unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Puns Abound. Um, all right, so where do you, are you going to I am gonna... going to go pay for my food. Oh, I let, uh, I let Bertram do that. Yeah, when uh, when you when you talk to your server about paying, uh, Mickey has actually covered you guys. Oh no! It's, no. So it's it, well, too bad. Let's say it's on Mickey's tab. Mickey hasn't yet paid that tab, but it's all on Mickey's tab. Oh, then let's go. Yeah, and then we're gonna put it on there. We're gonna walk out very quickly. <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys walk out not... into the. All right. Into where the... where are you staying? Persian. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hadn't figured it out yet, to be honest. I was just trying to make sure I got ship's passage. I was going to say most of the rest of you refugees are uh, spending the night on the ship, and uh, I kind of felt like I should be there with them. I don't mind where you want to stay. Let's just. I I can sleep on a ship. It's fine. I'm sleeping in my own place. You want me to carry it for you while you're in there? Oh, you're more than welcome to join me if you want to come in there. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll put it on the ship, and then we'll, we can all get in. There we go. Problem sure. solved. It does solve some of our space problems. Absolutely. Yeah. To the Hello. ship, then. What? You'll, you'll, you'll see. It's fine. It's fine. We've got to, we got to come. Oh, she kicked me. I don't know. She's invited. She's invited. <laughs> Gonna leave her outside on all night, on a boat, mm. in the open air. Okay. Let's go then. <laughs> All right, so you make your way out of the bar. The uh, the night air outside is is nice and cool, and you uh, you see folks just kind of lined up outside, and they're they're just chatting and drinking. You know, it's it's very informal. the The mood here is very kind of laid back. Um, but yeah, you can Bertram lead you uh, right over to. Uh, the the kind of makeshift slip that uh the the ship he is in the the, sh- the ship he has procured the the ship is called the dead reckoning dead reckoning that's what it is <laughs> and uh and yeah the uh the 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 two they're not really guards they're it's like the first mate and and another one of the hands recognize you bertram and uh and say hello, and I assume you introduce them to everyone, and they allow you onto the ship. Excellent. They don't give any uh, any guff for adding three more three more people onto the ship. No, no. It's it, this is 
Uh, honestly, you think the ship is really full, but they they have seen they've seen some shit. They've seen it fuller than this. They've seen it stacked with cargo fuller than this, where it would nearly tip over. So the, what you have brought on is nothing. Fair um, enough. But they uh, they seem to say that it's been quiet all night and no one has uh, no one has approached or, or tried to to gain passage at all. So uh, I'm gonna give them a quick description of the woman from the tavern and just let them know keep keep their eyes up but, but like like teeth like a goblin that's, that's yeah or that's a, i mean almost reminded me of like serpent like like just very sharp lots of teeth hmm. yeah yeah we're yeah we'll, we'll keep an eye out we're not gonna let anybody like that on that that's your own t-types <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so they they say that they'll double their efforts on the watch, and you guys are admitted to the ship. Okay, if you wish to enter, um, we, do we hold hands? And yes, we hold hands. Jump. <laughs> yes. Let me place it down, and I place in a room that we're staying in or whatever. So, um, you guys, you uh, you you head downstairs, and just the kind of the oppressive humidity of I don't know maybe 150 people jammed in and in, in tight 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 quarters are down there um it's when Bertram said it was a lot he he meant it was a lot so you could probably eke out room downstairs but you could also stay you know upstairs and onto the on the main deck and and be more comfortable than than downstairs it's up to you, though. Well, I I find somewhere safe to put my genie's bottle. Yeah, yeah, you can absolutely do that. The uh, uh, near the the captain's wheel, there's a bunch of like small, kind of hidey spots that you could put it. Yeah, and I wisp all of us in. You know, I thought that I had a a map for that, but I don't. Oh, inside so... my bottle. Inside my bottle is very. It's full of like curtains and velvet curtains and cushions and low tables. Very fancy and comfortable and very nice and cool to sleep in. This is where I was saying we could leave the book if you wanted to. If there's anything you don't want to carry, you can leave it in here. But you won't be able to get it out until the next time we come in here. Actually, this is pretty. What's preventing us from being taken? And I point up like I'm out. You can see out of where we are. If I, where I've, where I've put the bottle, it's hidden. As long as it's secure, I secure it as well. Um, there's nothing stopping someone picking up the bottle and walking off of it. But then if they did, we would just jump out and kill them. If they were threatening. Would it not be better if one person stayed out? Why? To prevent the bottle being taken in the first place? Oh, if it would know if it did, we'd see them coming. You can see outside. Obviously, you're inside with me now. So you can <laughs> see outside. And you can hear outside if you want to hear. It's the first time a centaur has been in a bottle before. You gotta. Yeah. <laughs> you're, like, you're like a little figurine horse thing. We're tiny. I'm we're tiny at the moment. Now concerned that we, the the lot of us, accepted this wholeheartedly the first time it happened. Like, yeah, no, we're yeah. in a bottle. It's fine. <laughs> we didn't now, ask too only, many questions. <laughs> only one time did you pop out and get attacked by some yeti. That was only one time. Yeah. yeah right. Okay. Um. I'm going to take the book out of my bag and I, I guess hand it to Saralus and say, yeah, okay, this is a decent place to hide it, I guess. We could put it in this How chest. How do we get out of here? Oh, you just have to ask me and I can eject you. But I can't just wish you really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, was, I thought it was, it was kind of like a jump team. You, you, once you, you elevate so high, you just kind of... I'll put it. I'll put the book in this chest and I'll point over and then there'll be a chest that'll appear there and I'll just open it up and put it in. 
You can. Can you? Can you, can you can make anything you appear like that? What is? It's like. It's like a bag of holding. But. Right. I, we can only get the items out by coming in here, which I believe I can only do once a day. Yeah, I think that's true. Can you make one, food? Once, once per long rest. Uh, 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 let me... So it is as an action. You can magically vanish and enter your vessel, which remains in the space you left. The interior of the vessel is an extra dimensional space in the shape of a 20-foot radius cylinder, 20 feet high and resembles your vessel. The interior is appointed with cushions, low tables and comfortable temperature. While inside, you can hear the area around you. Without a vessel as if it's in your space. You can remain inside the vessel up to a number of hours, which is eight. You can exit the vessel early if you use a bonus action to leave, if you die or if the vessel is destroyed. When you exit the vessel, you appear in an unoccupied space closest to it. Any objects left in the vessel remain there until carried out. And if the vessel is destroyed, every object stored there harmlessly appears in the unoccupied spaces closest to the vessel. Once you enter the ves uh, vessel, you cannot enter again until you finish a long rest. So, yes. Cool. So, we, nice. can, leave, we can leave it in here. but And obviously, if we have to get in it tomorrow early, we can always come in early. We just won't be able to use it again at night to sleep in. <clears throat> I find a spot to get comfortable in. <laughs> it's, it's easy. It is easy to do. It is. It is actually a I, very I find, comfortable space. I, I find a spot like up against the side of the bottle, I guess, so that I can lean my human portion up against it and crash that way. Yeah, there's enough pillows. You could make yourself like a pillow mountain and like lay against the wall onto the pillow mountain man i've never considered how the heck do centaurs sleep like <laughs> <laughs> there's no possible way that could be comfortable well the, the, they, they can the... lay their body down flat like real horses and it would be like side sleeping for the human portion i suppose um, or they can tuck their legs under them and then lean against like a post or a mountain of pillows or a wall or something like that. How do centaurs sleep? The new children's book being written by Pike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always imagine it like um what's the things from uh Dark Crystal? The sex keys? Not oh. not the sex keys, but the other the, their other half. The, like the the weird like sage people so like they have like a like a long like tiered chair bed thingy and that's what i feel like symptoms would use how we think lay the low body on one thing and then the human top on the rest of it you put too much thought into it <laughs> that's a good story let's go to bed <laughs> i'm glad you guys got to see that because that shit's being edited right on out of the youtube video all right uh, yeah so the uh the night passes uneventfully um if uh so your description uh carola said you can hear outside can you also see or is it just here it doesn't mention c i thought it did originally so you you certainly kind of hear the the sounds of footsteps around and you, the voices of oh we're ready the main sails and it, I, I I Bertram was supposed to be here and it just it sounds as though there are folks talking and wondering where where Bertram is uh, he came on board last night sir uh, well if he would come on board he would be here now wouldn't you just <laughs> discussions of, of that manner <laughs> nothing nothing leave? nothing Am angry but. Uh, I, I can message the captain. That's going to go over real well. <laughs> okay, let's see where this goes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Uh, I think there might have been something in that, that, that stuff I bought from Featherlight last night. That's Holy jeez! I just had the the weirdest. Did you hear that? Did you guys hear that? Did you, did, did you hear that? Did you hear that? 
Oh my god. This is oh. old man Bertram. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Who are you calling old man? <laughs> I hear him. And the first mate and the rest of the crew are looking at the captain as though he's gone around the corner. Uh, so, sir? Are you, are you, shh, shh. Bertram, he's old. I'm on the ship. Hiding. He says he's hiding. <laughs> okay, sir. Um, would you like us to continue to ready to leave port? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what Bertram wants. <laughs> and so they, they slowly <laughs> kind of back away from him. I'm sorry, what was that last bit? I've got you covered, Bertram. It's all good. <laughs> uh, you you just you hear him upstairs whispering it. Bertram, Bertram, where are you? This this how are you talking to me if you're hiding? You've uh you've you've definitely given the captain some uh some weird headspace right now. Yeah. Uh, we'll just let it ride. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Go see. Aren't we expected to help? Yeah, so this is the next morning. The night passed uneventfully. Okay, and okay. Now, you're, and now, you're now totally... I can get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 night, the night ball. passed, and you heard the captain and the first mates at like, the beginning of the day, and then you decided to totally just <laughs> mind if scramble it, If him. it's been eight hours, we automatically pop out anyway. So we'll say that all happened at seven hours and fifty-eight minutes. Yeah. And as soon as the crew goes off, he's looking around for Bertram, and then just suddenly, all four of you appear, you know, next to him on the floor. <gasps> oh, you Bertram, you've got to teach me that. Right, that was a, a great, great hiding spot. Oh man. I thought for a minute that Featherlight had done me one bad with that stuff, but well, that's story for, also story probably for true. No nope. story for another time. Uh, are you ready <laughs> to? Uh, are you ready to leave? Uh, you brought more refugees, I see. No, uh, just uh, extra extra hands. I'm the Archmage ah. Carolus Vex. Please continue. I will rest in the captain's quarters. And I walk you... off towards ah. the captain's quarters. You don't have to let him in there. It's uh, there's like 19 people in there right now. I'd be surprised. <laughs> Do you hear it? One more. I mean, there's people in here. <laughs> <laughs> I I would have been surprised had it fit one more. Uh, well, we are ready to to pull anchor as as soon as you give the word. Uh, it's yours. So he begins to uh to to holler out to the other the other mates and uh. The, the anchors are pulled and the, the sails begin to fill with wind and you see back on the shore some some folks waving and uh you you see Bertram you see Mickey and and he's got your your cup and he's waving your cut his your cup just <laughs> throw it just oh yeah this is gonna go this is gonna go well oh no oh this is gonna go well um I okay. my hand. God, what does that have to not be psychic? Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, he uh, he like throws it nearly in the dirt in front of him. <laughs> Can I grab it with Mage Hand? Uh, you're more than 30 feet from it. Oh. Unless you have like super long Mage Hand. I'm trying to think if I do or not. <laughs> but no, carry on. That's I'll, I'll get it to you next time I see you. Oh, you ain't get that back. That's <laughs> he's, he's heading back. to picks, water deep. And we'll be back, back in a... Shaka. Shaka. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know he's heading for water deep, so yeah, he must we'll be on a ship though. that is is he outside is leaving. Eldritch Blast range. Oh, uh, what's the range on that? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> no, you could totally Eldritch Blast him. Uh, um, as they're all like turned around and doing that, Caesar is already like got his shirt off and is doing the work of like five other crewmen 
<laughs> on, the, on the boat. So I, I will say that the Bertram undersold it a little bit. The the crew here seems to be quite capable. You're 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 impressed that uh, I mean they're just taking off, but you're impressed with how well they're doing. Um, many of them are impressed with you immediately taking your shirt off and getting to work, though. That's <laughs> nice, kind of a nice little that little bit of lanyard for them. <laughs> I'm gonna find a spot out of the way and fold myself up as small as I possibly can. Okay. I'm gonna find a comfy spot and read about orcs. Uh, absolutely. So yeah, I will do. Current, currently, okay. I have you guys at the at, at the rear uh, of the ship here. Uh, but you should have control of your tokens and should be able to place them where you would like. I'm probably going to be... Where is the least out of place space? <laughs> Up here at the um, figurehead? Near character. the figurehead? Uh, you could do that. Uh, this, this, so the figurehead is, is at the north side of the map. Um, you certainly may do that, though I will say you've got one set of ship stairs and another set of ship stairs and then another set of, set of ship stairs to get there. Oh, crap. Don't have and control you're on no. character. You don't. I do not have control. Then I'll go either. right here, as far back as possible. Determined by character settings. Stand by. Might be because you guys had dropped and then rejoined the game. Edit. Can be edited and controlled by... Do not have... Careless. Save changes. Yep, I can do that now. Wait. All right, I just got to go through the sheets here. Bertram. And then roll 20. Stop. There it goes. Oh my God. <laughs> the whole thing crashes. <clears throat> Thanks to Lawful Stupid for crashing. Roll 20. Uh, where are you? Here. Pike, I'm not see <laughs> Nice. I'm not seeing you as someone who can control. Oh, Bert. It's under Bert. Ah, uh, yes. And then, uh, Key, do you have control of your token? Okay. Uh, it, 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 everybody has control now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so the uh, you guys make your way out into the into the waters and um, it's it's I'll say it's smooth sailing, but Keed, you are with your first time being on a boat, you are definitely not used to kind of the the roll and the pitch and so when you're when you're laying down things are fine it's only mildly disconcerting but when you decide to stand up and try to stretch your legs a little bit you're you're kind of like a dog in the back of a pickup truck just like you know trying to get your sure footing on the on the water that is why i don't stand up <laughs> uh, no. and I def okay. i'm definitely holding on to the hand railing around the side of the boat and trying to handle motion sickness. Yeah, you're you're doing pretty good with that. It, it's it is disconcerting to you, but you're you're not getting the the sick tummies. Half tempted to cover my eyes. Please tell me you have your own little set of blinders. I think I think I might. Because that would only make more jokes from Careless just even better. <laughs> I might. Um, <laughs> uh, depends on how unsettling this gets. During a storm, I might pull them out. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say that there's just a just a slight chop to the water. It, it's really not bad, um, and it's it's pulling along at you know four or five knots. So you guys are actually cruising pretty smooth. Um, the captain says that if the if the wind uh, keeps up like this, that you should be uh, at water deep. Uh, you know, maybe maybe as soon as six days. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously, if the wind dies off, it'll take a little longer. But uh, but he's very pleased with how uh, how the wind is so far. 
Cool. So what would you guys like to get into here on your first day? Uh, I'd like to make myself as useful as possible. I don't have the sailing exper experience that Cesar does, but I For told sure. the captain the... I had to help, and I'll pull whatever rope that needs pulling. The, uh, the, thing, bad real quick. the thing that, that seems to need the most assistance with is just taking care of the people in the hold, getting getting people fed, you know, making sure that they have fresh water, making sure that waste is taken care of. Um, you've got a couple of folks down there that are just casting prestidigitation just like repeatedly uh, <laughs> to deal with that situation. But uh, so, yeah, taking care of the refugees is, is kind of, you know, small injuries, things like that. Yeah. That's kind of the, the highest need at the moment, especially with Cesar shirtless running around, pulling every rope on the deck. <laughs> I imagined uh, Keed is, is. Could you give me some help with the uh, the refugees down below? This seems like something you'd be better suited to uh it's uh, gonna go so well uh hold i hold on that's if kid if you don't want to move around the boat too much i got an idea for you um i don't want to invade your personal space but i can fashion you a sling while you're up here on the deck that'll keep you stable enough that you don't feel like you're, you're gonna tip over Yes, but I guess I can shift. Going downstairs is really hard for me. <laughs> Going downstairs Just is so easy because of gravity. Going upstairs is really <laughs> difficult. <laughs> so, so the thing about horses and cows is they can't go downstairs without getting injured. Oh, you know what? You're right. That's true. I've heard that before. Going upstairs is fine, but going downstairs is not. Um, right. Let me... Stay here. <laughs> so you can... Uh, you know can, when like, you need me to move You can create food different... on deck or something. I'll carry it down. It's fine. Let me, yeah, I, I can do something up here. I'm going to yeah, go I mean, fishing, and I'm going to catch the biggest fish to feed all of the people on the boat you do and then suddenly you awake from that daydream like, <laughs> oh, no. oh. oh yeah I've, ah. got, I've got to actually do it uh, uh and you're I... looking at your book on orcs though and you 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 think about the fact that that bertram is a half orc and so you're like you try to surreptitiously you're looking at the book and then you're looking at bertram and like oh okay that's what his leg bone looks like well like half of it <laughs> and so and so he's he's become a very very big point of interest for your your orc physiology studies. As I walk by, I'll just be like, "It's the bottom half," and I'll give him a wink. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I uh, I dive into the water and turn into a giant shark. <clears throat> go fishing the, the what are you is, the crew is definitely impressed by that like a little wigged out but definitely impressed I say, I'm standing here with my wooden stick sword <laughs> 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 trying to hand bread to people uh yeah we'll you know as a giant shark we'll say that you can that you can get a a pretty a pretty big beastie uh let's say you pull something you know 50 60 pound kind of marlin type you know, creature in, uh, which is a, a lot, uh, be a lot of meat for, for people. Yes. Yeah. So we'll say that you can absolutely do that and, and get it over to the side of the ship and they'll help hoist it up onto the deck. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. I'll do that. Cool. Um, yeah. So you guys, you make food, you feed people, you take care of some injuries. Uh, everything, everything goes okay for, for two or three days, uh, you guys are starting to, to fall into a swing with this. Um, and then one evening, just about dusk, uh, kind of out of nowhere, uh, a fog 
rolls in. Uh, and it, it is it is a pea soup thick fog, and the captain calls for the sails to be let down. It's just it's it's just too dangerous when when we can't see. We sh we might end up turning around and heading back down south for all we know. Captain, is it normal for the fog to come up this quickly? <clears throat> Uh, uh normal is, <laughs> normal is a strong word but it uh it certainly can happen the uh it, he'll go into a, just a, a lot of thick stuff about changing weather patterns and you know cool air systems and uh, things that are way over your fucking head i'm looking at bertram you should be like <laughs> i'm i'm just nodding along pretending to understand and <laughs> oh, no idea can I can um, I see normally in this with devil sight? Oh, I don't know. Tell me, tell me about devil sight. So it says you can see in obviously normal and magical darkness up to 120 feet. Well, so it's not darkness; it's fog. Yeah. So like, a, it's like a fully obscuring kind of a pea soup fog. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it, uh, the ship, you know, eventually kind of slows to to kind of a nothing, and uh, the captain calls for the anchors to be dropped. As soon as, as soon as the fog's cleared out a little bit, or at least we can see a little further, we'll pull we'll pull anchor and we'll get back underway. But it's it's just too dangerous. And he would he will look to you, Cesar, for agreement. Yeah. Drop the anchors. Put everyone on alert. I don't like this fog. Yeah, he uh he he didn't like I I you, but it's 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 like a you're sort of his one step down co captain ish kind of person. He 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 will never say that, but he definitely's <laughs> been taking some uh taking some cues from you. Uh yeah, and so they they drop the anchors, the um that the crew is what little of the crew that there is 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 on on alert um i mean they're not warriors though they all have you know knives but <laughs> you and ropes you four, <laughs> and ropes but you four are like the only powerhouse on the boat that you have seen i'm going to cast a uh, dreadcraft um okay. and going to see what the weather is like for the next 24 hours at my location. Hey. Nice. Um, the uh, the weather should be uh, clear with, uh, with kind of mild to moderate winds, uh, no rain, uh, and interestingly, no fog. Like maybe even, I don't know how, if it reads like a weather report, but uh, your Druidcraft weather report doesn't even really show fog now, even though there is fog. Yeah, it says uh, that it can manifest as like a golden orb f hmm. with a description, visual description of what the uh, weather is supposed to be like. So we'll go with that. Um, and I'm going to turn to whomever's right next to me, Bertram, I guess. Um, this fog isn't natural. We're not supposed to, and I'm going to gesture to what's in my hand. We're not supposed to be having anything foggy right now. It's supposed to be clear skies for the next 24 hours. A good wind. Right. All right. Captain said it came up a bit sudden, but I'll uh, I'll make sure he knows. And I'll head up to wherever the captain and Caesar are and just basically tell them what Caesar's gut is already telling him. Okay. He'd confirm there's there's no fog due at, in this area anytime soon, so we're right to be on our guard. Careless. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna obviously very on edge. 
And yeah. man, is roll twenty being slow for you guys? It is like crawling mm -hmm. to a halt for me. Yeah. D and D Beyond, I had to close completely and reopen. I may have to do that for roll twenty. It, it is. Pretty I'm gonna. Easy so these ballista are these ballista are they actually do they really exist or is this uh, just they, generic they ship that you've pulled for roll 20. <laughs> well it's pseudo generic ship uh okay. that i found uh but uh there are ballistas but they they don't necessarily seem to be in the best repair you you figure that that this had been outfitted really well when it was kind of a new ship but that it has been running you know, cargo and personnel, um, maybe as part of a group of ships. And so even if this, the ballistas were working well, there aren't the people to man them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'd like to at least get near a ballista. So I'm ready and I do have a spyglass. And so I'd like to pull that out and see if I can see anything through this. Fog. Uh, you, absolutely can it is foggy oh i'm getting dressed <laughs> uh you're not gonna keep your shirt off uh nope not for this uh fog i'm not <laughs> I'm i just real reopen real <laughs> 20 here um <clears throat> all right if you think you need to get dressed i'm getting yeah i'm getting dressed all right <laughs> My dagger warns me of any danger. Tell me more about that. <laughs> not, 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 just that it's, not that it's pertinent. Not that it's pertinent yeah. right now or anything. But if 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 it, there was danger, what would that? What would the that magic look? weapon <laughs> warns you of danger. While the weapon is on your person, person, you have advantage Persian. on initiative rolls. In addition, you and any of your companions within thirty feet of you can't be surprised unless incapacitated. Interesting. The, the weapon magically awakens you and your companions within range if any of you are sleeping naturally when begin when combat begins. Okay. Um Well, I will tell you that it is it is doing whatever it does. It's it's vibrating a little bit or pinging a little bit to to let you know that something is definitely not right. It would be telling everyone within 30 feet of me then. <clears throat> uh, so, Cesar, are you down on the lower portion? Of the, are you guys where your tokens are? Yeah. That's uh, all that I know. Yeah, actually, this is fine. I'll be in the back here. Is that a, a crossbow right here? Uh, see, so it's a ballista on the ship, and that's what I was saying to, oh, to Bertram is that, yeah, they're... They're in okay order. Um, I will tell you that I have not pulled the stats for them, so that might determine how good of working order they're in or not. Cool. <laughs> um, My only other ranged option is a sling, so I'm going to hope that they can fire bolts farther than I can throw a rock. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'm hoping for out of these things. Uh, all right, I'll buy that. Um, so Careless has, uh, has warned you all that things well, don't seem quite right. The, the they, captain is get a tingling themselves. But oh, they would get a tingle themselves. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> he we're probably, all feeling he probably, tingle. probably slaps Careless again. Uh, but, uh, the, the, the captain and the, the crew definitely see that you guys are, in a ready posture and on alert and they then kind of become on alert um so i will say cesar you probably can't see uh can't see the front of the ship but you definitely you hear noises up there um noises that definitely sound like feet, hands, uh, the sound maybe of people. Um, 
Uh, I'm gonna shout out towards that end of the ship. Um, for 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 like any other deck hands to, to like give me their, their their status. Uh, you know that you should hear from two hands up there, and you didn't hear from any. Killed up. <laughs> Is that all in uh, mist as well? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, I I could do a a, a fog of war on it, but. We're kind of theater of the mind at the moment. Um, I, start, I yes. start gliding. I turn into a genie, half genie. Uh, all right. How far up do you do you want to go? Um, ten feet up in the air, and then I mm -hmm. move, move over towards Caesar. Okay. Over to here, and have a look over there, or listen over there. You uh, as well hear the, the the what sounds like the sounds of people. Although it, the, that sound is getting less and less, which is a little perplexing. Perplexing. Okay. What do we do? Move forward. I move. I move closer. Thirty. So. As you come to there, you definitely see um, some people. And they have swords drawn and they're standing quietly. They, they, you know, they're, they're kind of holding on so they're not making any kind of shuffling noises. And then behind them, you do hear a voice. Now, this doesn't have to go the way that it seems it's going. All we want is what Bertram took. <laughs> what does he look like? Uh, just looks like Bertram's chest right now. I don't know what's happening. Um, you can't, you, you, that's a voice that you hear behind the people that you can see. Uh, you cannot quite, you'd have to move a little more forward to see. Bertram. Um, and are you, are you 10 feet up from the lower deck or are you 10 feet up uh, from the upper where you started? I would be I mean, 10 foot up from the heart, uh, for both. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you, so you're like, like the, yeah. almost 20 feet in the air. 20 okay. feet from the air. Yeah. 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 No sweat. I would like to cast daylight. Okay. And it's going to be centered on the mast here. Oh, okay. um, gotcha, so gotcha. a 60 foot radius sphere of light spreads out from the point you choose within range. The sphere is bright light and sheds dim light for an additional 60 feet. Uh, if you choose a point on the object you're holding and that one becomes shiny, uh, that isn't worn or carried, the light shines from the object and moves with it, completely covering the affected object with an opaque object, such as a bowl or a helm, blocks the light. If any of the spell's area overlaps an area of darkness um, created by a spell of third level or lower, that spell is cre that created the darkness is dispelled. I'm not sure if it will work. For what I was what I would say is it, it is it, it does not dispel the mist, but the it is definitely bright now and and kind of bright white fog. But what I will say is that that little bit of extra light allows Carolus to see um, that there are three more uh, up top, and so the the one speaking Carolus is right in the center and looks uh, looks. A little bit fuzzy in the mist, but maybe like a tabaxi. Okay. Um, what about the other creatures? They're all human. Yeah, the humans as some kind of half elves. Uh, it's it's just the one token because I'm lazy. Um, 
but uh but yeah kind of a smattering of, of of again human adjacent they're humans they're they're half elves they're um you know, things of that nature but but the the captain seems to be tabaxi again this doesn't all i want is what bertram took and we'll be right back off your boat and you can move on and never even remember seeing us was oh, it yes. the people or wait can i hear them i'm sorry <laughs> And, and sure, say, yeah, am yeah, I yeah, hearing? Am I hearing any of this? Yeah, it's it's only the the boat's like a hundred feet long, so, and he's putting some full throat into it. So, um, All right. I'm gonna dash forward. I'm gonna say, let me see what he wants, and I verbally speak, and I just fade into invisibility. Okay, interesting. So you're okay. invisible now. I am. Flying and invisible. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Greater invisibility. Love it. <clears throat> so yeah, it's it. Bertram, you uh, from there you can't see anyone. Uh, roll a a perception or history. I'll let you choose to see if you recognize this voice. It's not gonna be history. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, perception's not much better. Eight. I mean, it, it does not so far sound like anyone that you recognize. All right. I'm just going to call out. Uh, it's me, Bertram. If you have any uh, business with me, uh, I'm here. The... Leave the rest of the ship alone, and we can talk this out. What do you need? Uh, again, I'm I'm willing to leave the entirety of the ship and all of its passengers alone as soon as I have what you took, and you know who she was. Who she was? I, I'm sorry, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. It's late. We purposely provide do these things late uh, to kind of mess with you, but. Now you're starting to wear thin on my nerves, Bertram. I don't want the rest of the refugees. I don't even want your crew. But I do want her back. Listen, I didn't I didn't ask names or histories of 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 people that I helped onto the out of the city. I I, I don't know who you mean. Well. Regardless maybe you should remember that should you ever get the chance to take any more refugees aboard. Anyone on this ship as a as a passenger was, as you say, a, a refugee from the city that I imagine that you sacked. If if I if I understand you correctly. No, I did not sack it, but I know who did. <clears throat> and that's why I'm here. Then I'm afraid I've sworn to protect those on this ship, and I I. I yeah. I honestly, I don't know who you're who you're here for, but I don't know if it matters at this point. Carolus is no, bored. I'm not really. Eldritch blast him. Yeah, let's do it. Oh no. <laughs> okay. I gotta find where his sheet is. Um. Yeah, and I will. I will let you do that uh, with advantage since you are invisible. I don't know that you can do it. Oh, how many Eldritch Blasts do you have? Three. Is it three? Eldritch Blasts. <laughs> 20, 23, and 24. Ooh. Okay, let's go. Well, <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> think <laughs> Hold on, I'm still getting his sheet open. Uh, uh, what was that armor class you hit there? 20, 23, 24. Yeah, unfortunately, all of those hit. Um, Why is that only? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, right, yeah, okay. So uh, it's 26 13, plus 12. Hang on, 20, 26, 30 damage. And he, and he flies back 30 feet. 
But it's 26 <laughs> plus 12. <laughs> right? It is 6 plus 38, 4. 38. So it's 10, 17, plus 13. It's 30 damage. The plus 4 only hits for one of them. Oh, 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 I Gen see. Yeah, I Genie's see. Wrath's only once. I see. So 30 damage. 30 damage, and he flies back 30 feet. <laughs> <laughs> you... You uh, for sure dump him into the drink. Uh, as he's falling away, you can hear him uh, uttering some sort of a feline curse. Um, this guy here is immediately back on. Oops, back on his rope, headed down to presumably try to help the captain. Uh, and the others are kind of standing there trying to figure out what the best plan now is. Trying an initiative? Right, 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 that's my question. Because, Well, it's the ball's in your court. We can roll initiative. All right, well, well then I've got... talking this out. Well, let's, I mean, I've got, I've, rolling. I, I mean, like, yeah, I've got anything I'll do right now if we're still... <laughs> uh, if you have one thing you want to do, Cesar, we can do that before we roll initiative, but if you guys are determined to just cut them all down in cold blood, uh, we can do that. I, I, wanted, I wanted to run up next to Bertram and cast Gust of Wind to push the rest of them off. If I could, if, if that was going to work to push them off. Uh, so they're on a platform that's like 10 feet up from where you are. Would Gust of Wind work that way? Uh, it's... it's what's the height? Hold on. This is unexpected, but I love it. And if it will work, <laughs> this is amazing. Uh... Uh, it's only lo it's only long and wide. I didn't say about how high it goes up, so it'd probably be from whatever level I'm at. So that's not going to work unless I can make it up the stairs. But I can't. No, I can't. I'll say that you could. I'll say that you could get up on this ballista right here, and we'll say that it closes enough distance that you could affect some of them. I will because... take it. <laughs> I, uh, you have to reward good play. <laughs> uh, so move yourself to here. And we'll say that the uh, these four in the front row, you'll be able to gust to gust them and, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Get off of my plane. Oh, uh, strength save. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're probably probably gonna make this. <laughs> uh, it's actually the strength is not that super. Um, give me one second here. If we actually go into uh, some initiative, I will. I'll put some in, some music on here. But all right, so the two on the left. Um, that is a 14 and a 16. And the two on the right. That's a natural one for two and a Excellent. five. Oh, so, so one of them beats your strength save. Uh -huh. 15 feet away from you in a direction following the line. So my line is just pointed straight back at the ship. Or to the, to the or to the front of the ship. Um, so this is this is your line. Yeah. Uh huh. Fifteen feet, you say? Is Make it sure. not going to be enough? <laughs> no. Ah. Uh, I don't think, well. Well, so for sure, this guy is fifteen feet. This guy is the one who rolled the one, so he's for sure going. I was to going me. to say, okay, that's um, fine. This it's guy actually business. made. This guy made his save. This guy failed, um, but we're gonna put him down here, and we're gonna put him prone um, because he fell kind of down that little segment. Or is that going up? Yeah, it's going down. He fell down that little segment, and. Um, uh, we'll give him snail because I don't know what prone is. And I'm going to roll. Uh, pardon? 
I was sorry. The does the the heavy wind disperse any of this fog? We're getting to yes. that. We're getting to that. Uh, so I'm gonna roll a d20 on one to ten. Uh, that guy takes fall damage. On eleven to twenty, he does not. That's seven, so he takes fall damage. Um, yeah. So he'll take uh, five points of falling on his face damage. <laughs> Minus five. And yes, I will say that the um, pretty much the entirety of the front end of the ship there, so kind of from, from here to the tip, you have blown the fog away. And so the ones that are there, you can see in the clear. And my friends, we need to roll some initiative. Um, make sure to have your hey, character selected. That's a kraken. Ah, oh, you want me to do it for real? Uh, you don't. You, you don't have to. You don't have to. I'll, I'll take that. It's it's hard to. But the token was son of a. I thought I clicked on it. That's fine. All that's right. Fine. I'm gonna roll it just to get my thing myself in the tracker, but. I'm taking my 20. Love it, love it. Um, it's not aiming me. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Oh, wait. Those two guys are in the drink. I can take my first roll for the initiative, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah, just update yourself. You can edit okay. yourself if you do it again. Now that you figured it out, you can just click on the number and edit it. Oh my goodness, so much going on. All right, it looks like Bertram might be yeah. first. I think I'm first, but it's put me at the bottom sort for some descending. reason. Sort descending. There he goes. There he goes, Bertram. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. And so if you if you mouse over mine, it should show you uh, which guys you were looking at for each one. Who's who? Yeah. All and right. It, you should put a yellow square on, on, the, uh, on the thing. Uh, I rolled, uh, you know what, mine are all rolling just to me, because I had that selected. Um, They're all in the tracker, them, though. In the tracker, though, yeah? Yeah, they're there. Uh, Bertram, your move. Yep, I'm going to step forward and cast Sleep. Okay, interesting. So, five of you. Uh, 11, but I'm only third level paladin, so it's a first level of sleep. Okay. I just didn't know anyone still cast sleep after like fourth level, but hey, you know what? You do you, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so 26 hit points centered so, on the two in front of me there. So if anyone has that number or fewer, they fall asleep. They fall asleep. Yep. Neither of them fall asleep. Excellent. Uh, and I'll just ready my sword, and that's about it. Alrighty. This is worth a yeah. shot. Yeah, especially for a monk who doesn't want to kill people, it absolutely was worth a shot. Yeah, yeah. So you, guys far, can, you guys can hear some some splashing and some kind of some gurgling over on this side. Um, <laughs> That guy that rolled the, the one, not having a good day. Uh, I'm yeah. going to aim no. for... Getting them off the ship, that's a great solution. This one here first, that's about to lean it over. One that's, yeah, he's about to start climbing down the rope to try to help his captain. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll I, feel like he, I feel like he's about to have a bad day, though, if you're going to shoot him. I'll try and give him a hand. <laughs> uh, 16? Uh, that does... That does beat his armor class. Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. Okay, he takes 15 damage and flies into the water. <laughs> Is it 30 feet again? 10 feet. 10 feet. Oh, okay, yeah, but that's down. Yeah, we're 10, 10 feet per blast. Yeah. yeah. 
Mm, okay. Probably not going to be seeing a whole lot of him anymore. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Can you you can pick different targets? I don't know what's going on, but I tried to get yeah. my character and it moves the whole map. Oh, there we go. Uh, so 5, 10, 15, 20, <laughs> 25. I'm watching it on the Twitch screen and it's hilarious. It was really weird. Uh, I'll move to there and I'll aim at this one. Okay. Action 20. Uh, oh, 18 damage. It <laughs> flies 10 feet. Yeah. Uh, how much damage? 18. 18. 18 plus. Oh, Genie's Wrath is, is only Good. once per First. firing. Is that right? Okay. So that's. Minus 18 for him. So, nice so they don't get like any kind of save nope. or anything to grab on anything. That's what makes <laughs> it so beautiful. It flies 10 feet. And it doesn't matter what size they are or whatever. Yeah. 10 feet. Bye bye. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, yep. Not something it's, I was expecting. It's not a little thing. broken. It's okay. <laughs> I'll do the next one for 27. Yeah, that hits. Or six damage off this one here, and he flies ten feet back as well. So that's kind of on the edge of the boat there. We'll send him off, and then you guys I'm gonna make a roll here, and you just won't know whether he was able to grab a rope on the way down or not. Okay. Uh, all right. What what else would you like to wreck of my? That'll do. <laughs> huh. And so you're ten feet above the ground. Oh shit! Are you still GI? Yeah, he's invisible. I'm visible. Yeah. <laughs> Woof. I'm outside of the gust of wind at the moment. That's still there. Woof, woof, woof. Yeah, I just thought that was concentration. <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20. I guess because he doesn't know any better and because I want to get at least one attack in. He's got to try and get through a gust of wind first. At All the right, beginning so of his, yeah, at the beginning of his turn, he has to just save. Uh, against the original strength save? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. What happens if he doesn't save? Then he see you later. 15, 15 feet. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> 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 Should have fallen asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because Carolus wouldn't have, like, Eldritch blasted them while they were asleep. I know. Uh, Cesar, that's you. Yeah, I'm going to drop uh, Augusta Wind. Because ah. I. <laughs> we were having so much fun. I know we were. Um, I'm going to. um. What's my dash distance? 60 feet. Um, I'm going to move to the top of the stairs here to just be nice and menacing. All right. I love it. You really want to get off my boat. All right. Keep <laughs> the back of the boat. You. You can see clearly what's going on because the fog <laughs> is blown away up there and your daylight is still running. Um, suddenly, it's not as big of an issue as it was six seconds ago. Yeah, so my idea was to jump off the side of the boat, turn into a, dry, a giant octopus, swim up there and grab them off the side. But they're all almost gone. So I think I'll just turn the ballista and try to sh 
I can't even see the other ones, right? Because there's the part of the deck in the way. Right. Because the, Yeah, because they're down below and the ballista It doesn't turn. look like I need to do anything, so I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> we'll say that you hold an action to do something. Yeah, I'll hold an action. If uh, I see anything, I'll, I'll aim the ballista and um, shoot. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's see. In the drink, in the drink, in the drink. In, ah, this guy who is... So he'll spend half his movement to get up. Uh, and he will just look at Cesar. Uh, I, I, I can go. I can just go right now. You can go. Then go. And go, he will... Go uh, with Calypso. He will... Uh, he'll start climbing down the rope. And from where you are, you can see that there's a a small... Uh, so no, you guys are on a galleon. This is some sort of like really small kind of fast clipper that uh, just slid up on you guys. And there's a couple of folks that are kind of climbing back into it that are obviously wet. And that's obviously where he's going. There's only a couple of wet folks and you for sure don't see the tabaxi up there. Um, so he's going to make his way down into the water and start swimming towards his ship. Uh, though. If you so choose, everyone, I'll be kind to let you know there is one more round before they can get onto their ship and start to break away from you in case you want to just set it on fire. Um, This guy, this guy as well uh, will point Cesar to the to the rope. Uh, I can can go, too. Yeah, yeah. All right. So he (laughs) he will he will come over to the rope and uh, and, and head down, and he is now in the water uh, as well. <laughs> um, and then we'll return to the top just to see what you guys want to do here. I'll keep the music going. Um, I'll jump down so that I can at least see where their clipper is. Um, you said that tabaxi that was speaking is not in sight. Correct, not in sight. You, you do not see him on the on the small clipper. Um, you don't see him wet. You don't see him commanding orders. You just you see people on the the port side that are kind of swimming that way. And as you were as you were here heading down, you saw no motion or movement on the starboard side. Okay. I'm just gonna yell down to him and say our. Are, are we clear, or is there still a misunderstanding? <laughs> like, use some very watery, uh, oh, you're too clear. <laughs> as they're trying to speak with swimming at the same time. All right. And I'll turn to the others and just say, we might want to have a word with some of the refugees, and figure out if anyone else might be coming after us, but... I call out to them, don't let me send the shark after you. And I try to intimidate them. Uh, yeah, you don't even have to try. They're they're well and and, and good intimidated. The, I mean, with the daylight spell, you might see that the water maybe looks a little more like pee than seawater. Um, they were they and I were not expecting two different wind effects. Um, I want to know what happens to the back seat. Uh, ooh, we'll just have to see on that, won't we? Can I see? Him? Uh, you cannot see him from where you are. I move over. <laughs> uh, okay, you you cannot see him from there either. Um, I fly off and look for him. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you, Carol. Let's get back here. <laughs> look, the anchor's up. Anchor's down. It, so, well, you gonna have. <laughs> uh, again, you you get out to there and and even you don't see him splashing or anything, and you don't see him. I want to see if he's uh, hiding on our boat. Uh, there, there is no one attached. The, you see the the guy, the second guy, who is just releasing the rope and getting into the water to swim. Uh, there's no one else hanging onto the boat. The the this guy over here, he didn't make his roll. It was, it was bad. It was a seven. Um, so he he could not hang on. So there's no one hanging onto the ship. Um, the ones you can see are headed towards the clipper. No fireball? 
I don't do fireball. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't do, do that. I could do something better. If you really wanted me to. Well, I want you to do what you do. Uh, you show your new uh, traveling companion that you're a cold blooded killer. Carolus is. He's not. He's oh, yeah, that's true. Remorse. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I <laughs> forgot about that. <laughs> Um. Uh, he'll uh, he'll let them go. Okay. He, he can see the the pee and the poop in the water. <laughs> Cesar. Um, I'm gonna turn around and yell out to uh the deckhands, uh, raise anchor and drop the sails. Bertram, when you hear that, you notice that, kind of, tucked in right here and tucked in right there seem to be uh, two of your deckhands that have been killed. Um, killed? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I cast... Yeah, and so that's that's how they 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 were able to kind of stealth up the side of the ship and then dispatch to... That's which is why when Cesar called out, they didn't respond. Okay. Well, on the boat then, on the whole boat, I'll, which is a 30-foot <laughs> radius covering the whole boat, I will cast Sickening Radiance. Oh, sick rad. And That's I a concentration. I, I, yeah, I become visible when I do that. I'd also uh, like to, as quickly you don't as have possible, to. Greater, not visibility greater is, uh, is concentration. Oh, it's concentration. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I'm still flying. <clears throat> which and your it. fly is not concentration? No, it's just part of my it's... genie ability. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Sick red is not good for me. Bertram? Uh, I just want to try lay on hands on these deckhands for just uh, a point, just to see if there's anything that can be done. Uh, they are, they're dispatched, unfortunately. Okay. One has a, one has a snapped neck and one has, has bled out and failed his death saves. Okay. Uh, oof. 24 points. DC 19 con save, though. Yeah, you tell you it's not gonna be good to the whole boat. Oh. Like all of us? No, not us. To, oh, okay, to, to their, their boat. Okay, their boat. <clears throat> and I was like, "Geez, oh man!" And if Tabaxi's hiding in there, he'd be in that and all. Uh, well, I will tell you that I I rolled five failures and one success. <laughs> oh, God. Um, all the ones that, is that foul, save Is it save, save for half? Um, let's have a look. Uh, the light spreads around any corner so no one can hide from it. Um, creature must succeed or take half. So save for half, okay. Succeed on a constant save and save and throw or take so for one level of exhaustion, they emit a dim greenish light in five foot radius. Makes them impossible to go invisible. Doesn't say anything about going half or anything. Okay. Well, so for sure, the last couple of guys in the boat that are that are trying to climb up on the boat are dimly green. There's lots of kind of dimly green light on the boat and it starts to kind of peel away. How long does uh, it take to peel away? Uh, it'll take a couple of rounds. Okay, well they take take that damage again. How many rounds in total? Uh, well the the sick red. How big is it? Massive. <laughs> Thirty foot radius. Massive. Huge. Okay, sixty sixty feet. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. They get another con save. They've take they've Two got fails. they've got a level of exhaustion, the ones that failed already. One save. Two fails. Okay, again, one save in that. One save. So they take another twenty nine and they take another level of exhaustion. You hear one of them sounds like one of them for sure just expired. <laughs> with a with a kind of a uh, and we'll say one. We'll we'll give you one more chance. We'll say one more round, and they're clear of it. Okay. 
DC 19 save again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> good lord. Better and better. Oh my god. Uh, they've got a disadvantage because they're two levels of exhaustion. Oh, son of a bitch. Alright, well, that's two fails. Three fails. And if they fail, they still have. They fails. now have three levels of exhaustion. Five fails. This is nasty. Uh, yeah, it, if, uh, uh, if it means moving the boat now, they'd need to roll skill checks with disadvantage. <laughs> three levels of exhaustion. Well, the uh, I will tell you, you that they were doomed. There were there were five fails on that. Uh, you hear some more screams and expirations. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly how many. The boat, uh, the they got the anchor up. The boat seems to be drifting away from you. But it does anyone. not seem to. It does not seem to be under command. No. Okay. I'll wave them. So, welcome to murder hobos, everyone. Hobo, one hobo. I wasn't gonna let them. Die. I wasn't gonna kill them. But then I took. Look, I, I wasn't killed. gonna I haven't kill him. Lifted a finger yet. <laughs> I wasn't gonna kill him, and then I decided to cast level Sick eleven Bad. warlocks. Guys, they are nasty. Dude, two crits on Sickrad is. I guess there's not crits, but the two. Tins, uh, yeah. yeah, two tens in there. It's ridiculous. Um. So if anyone did survive. They for sure had three levels of exhaustion. Yeah, well, yeah. As soon as they're out of the thing, they, they go. The levels of exhaustion go. Okay. As soon as oh, they're is that out, true? Yeah, as soon as they're out or the spell ends, the exhaustion disappears. Oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, all right. So things seem to be back to calm. There's a giant ball of daylight on the center mast. You can see clearly. Uh, you see some bodies floating in the water. Uh, that is dimly green glow. <laughs> what was that about, Bertram? I didn't have to kill the two, whoever they are. I don't know. I was being honest. I had no idea what they're talking about. I think maybe we might need to have a word with those down below. Well, to me, it seems like we're harboring someone that's important. I agree. Um, are you up for uh, a conversation with the uh, with the refugees? Sure. Can I trust you not to uh, <laughs> not to sickening radiance any of them? Uh, they haven't killed anyone, have they? No, uh, we don't know why they're wanted. Well, I'm only protecting our own. All right, let's just. Let's just agree to to maybe go easy on them the, for a little bit <laughs> until we find out. So no intimidation. Some, and, uh, let's let's just not go for that as our first option. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So let's... it will it will it will take quite some time to 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 talk to everyone. Um, do you guys want to pull anchor and? And try to get back underway. The the fog now, the seemingly some sort of spell, is uh, mostly pushed away in the front thanks to the wind spells. Um, do you guys want the captain to pull anchor and get back underway? Mm. Yes. And I say, make sure there's no stowaways on the ship like a tabaxi. Yeah, let's take a, a good look around the front of the ship and make sure everyone who went into the water stayed in the water or went to the uh, rainbow yeah are you still flying careless uh, that lasts for 10 minutes and i can up it again if i want to yeah this has been far less than 10 minutes so um yeah you can you take a, a full spin around the ship while they're pulling anchor and, and making ready and stuff yeah. you see no one no one clinging on um you uh, you do see you know some of the the bodies being nibbled on already by various uh, fishies and creatures and stuff, but uh, no one's no one's on the ship. Let's see if I can. Can I see into the water? Maybe like if anyone's hanging on under the hole. 
We'll, well, with the daylight, we'll say that you can kind of finagle it with, with daylight still running that, that you can see, you know, five or six feet down far enough that they would have to come up and get water, or come up and get air. Um, and, and you don't, uh, you don't see anyone clinging on. Okay. I'll head back to on top, on top deck. Oh. I was so sure that Cesar was going to use his trident of fish command to have the fish attack the pirates in the water. <laughs> he didn't. Cesar. It, it's only one dominate creature spell. It's not like I can control a fleet of fish. Yeah, why do you need more than one giant shark, though? We got the shark. Control, you could have controlled Catalyst earlier. <laughs> <laughs> So you spend the next several days uh, again on on watch on heavy watch without incident though, uh, yeah. and you pretty much make your way through the refugees and no um, nothing really kind of rings true to why they would want anyone on this ship. Um, Bertram, roll a roll an investigation for me. Oh, that's not great. I don't like those. If someone wants to help him, he can roll it with advantage. Uh, yep. Some uh, careless was helping, right? Yeah. What's this for? Talking with. Can I make a, a a persuasion to try to talk to the refugees and get one of them to admit to why someone might be after them? Uh, I mean, you could pr try to persuade them, but uh, they they don't know. They they are true refugees. Uh, the investigation check that uh, I had a specific thought in mind for. Okay, okay, okay. Depending on if you boned it or not. Yeah, do we, look at, do we find anyone that stands out? My uh, bad as well. It's, it's level three exhaustion that gives them disadvantage on saving throws. Well, I've, I've got a minus one, but I got a total of 14. That's actually good enough to make what I'm thinking. Um, you do remember that there was a point of time, a couple of hours worth between when you landed and were able to secure new passage and then got people moved over that someone could have slipped away. You didn't, you didn't have a head count or a, a list. So it is entirely possible that you did have whoever he was looking for to start with and now no longer do. Okay. So you left just, him by candle keep. How, what could go wrong? Yeah, that's fine. So just talking to all the passengers lit, I, <laughs> and no one knows who they would want or why they themselves would be wanted. Correct. Yeah. The, I mean, even many of the passengers even don't know each other, even though they're all from the, the, yeah. the same city, but they all have a very similar story about the, the pirates just coming on shore and just rolling up and just wreaking havoc. And just suddenly the town was controlled. Yeah. And, um, and all the stories are very similar, you know, tragic, um, you know, helping each other when they could, but there are many people that they remember that they don't see here, but there that's many, many hundreds by the time you question everyone of people that yeah. aren't here that they thought were here. Okay. And so the rest of your trip is uneventful. And just on the morning of the seventh day, you see Water Deep Harbor. You have made it. Your refugees are alive. You're all alive. So we see the you dragons. had to yeet. You had to yeet some people off the boat. Um, no, this is the picture I grabbed. Live with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you guys pull into Waterdeep Harbor, pull into a slip, 
And that is where we're going to end our stream this evening. I'm so glad to be getting off this damn boat. <laughs> you know what? After after a week, you're a little bit into it, and you try to show off a little, then you're like, oh, shit. Uh, and then you, like, crouch back down. 